Welcome back to Blackpool, the Ultimate Pool Pro Series, and this is the start of Event 8. We've seen Stevie Dempsey lift the title during Event 7 last night. We're now joined with Yannick Bofis and Ryan Fleming in this opening encounter. It's a race of 7, match clock on 50 minutes. I'm pleased to be joined by none other than the, the living legend himself, Ronan McCarthy. And Ronan, how do you see this one going? Um, it's a close, close one to call. This one, uh, they're both very, very solid. You know, they've, they've good all-round games that they don't really give you many easy chances to both players. So it's just really, you can see that this going to be ever break best. Just and the, uh, Ryan got a wee touch there on the break. He was very nearly enough, and you know the white stayed out, and now he's got a real good chance on reds. Whereas the white goes in, he probably loses the frame. It's just these fine margins that it's going to want to lose this match. Well, it's a nice opening to start with for Ryan Fleming. Saw a bit of Yannick Bofis yesterday in event seven. He had a very good start. Played extremely well on, on the main table yesterday. He did trip over later in the competition. And talking about later in the competition, a series of Event 7. You were just edged out in the quarter final yourself by Chris Mellon last night. Yeah, I was. I had a, I had a chance to win the match. 7-5. Uh, 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 tied up against one of his balls at 6-5. At, at and sort of left myself no shot and, and then Chris done what he, what he does best he cleared up in the final frame of, of his break so yeah it was, a, it was a hard one to take but at least it showed a bit of form so I'm, I'm, I was happy with the way I played so you, you take the positives out of it Well when I saw you playing which was two or three times during the day you looked pretty good in my opinion but you sort of dust yourself down to start again now it's a whole yeah. new ball game and you're playing late this evening Yeah I play the winner of Carl and Brian Halcrow so yeah I'll be well prepared for that match well, I know those two are playing over on one of the side tables yeah. at this moment in time as well. well this is a great opportunity for Fleming it's just, it just has to be careful with this uh, not to bring the red away from the pocket and he did. Oh, what's he done? He's, he's butchered it. I think he was that scared of, of, of catching it too thick that he, he's missed the whole part. Well, that's an incredible miss now from Fleming. I don't think Yannick can. It's just steady, so I can't believe he's getting back yeah. to the table in this room, I, I would imagine. I was talking to Yannick yesterday, and uh, you see him now sporting his new playing glasses it's he, he only tried them two weeks ago yeah that, that's this is a, his, that's well, a, yesterday was his first event with them yeah that's the first I, i've seen you know, the glasses he looks a wee bit more sophisticated looking or something with the glasses he's always been pretty sophisticated <laughs> yeah, Yannick, yeah. yeah he's he, a very studious character isn't he he is he, he, everything's very very uh, well prepared and, and well practiced when you watch him go around the table, he's very, you know, even from the break shot and everything else, he's very precise yeah. in his mannerisms and how he dresses the shot. I, th I think it's a, a French thing. I see a lot of the French fry like that. Maybe him and Christophe, you know, all the other ones learn from, from him and Christophe. So I see a lot of them. They're very uh, methodical. Well, they're at the top of the French tree, if you will. Yannick and Christophe Lambert, of course. Christophe won an event. Well, not very long ago as well, one of these Pro Series events. Just wants to pot this in the middle and leave a little angle to get around the back of those two yellows that can, will then become available in the right-hand centre. I think they might go up for them now. It looks like a good angle. I think I would have preferred to go up for one there, there now. Yeah, he had a choice. He's got to be careful not to overrun this. Yeah, I think that's, that's why I would rather have one up for one. You thought it was a bit easier to go the other way, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Just give him a few 
few more options. Yeah, he should be fine. He's, he's that played look, that well. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, he's played it perfect. Yeah. Yannick looking calm and relaxed. Yeah, he's a very, very experienced player. Yannick has been about. He's played all over the world. He's, he's, uh, he's played a lot of pool. He's very measured in his approach. You won't see Yannick do anything out of the ordinary or no, it's just anything one of those, too flamboyant. Yeah, he's just one of those players. He's just very hard to beat because he's, you know he's not going to give you anything soft. You know, you, you can play matches and get a lot of soft frames, but Yannick's one of those that he never really gives you anything. Almost like a poker player. Yeah, you just you, you really have to you have to beat him. You know, he's not going to beat himself. Down goes the black ball, and it's Yannick Berfis. Ryan won the, I think he won the big amateur, the, the ultimate amateur uh, Did. one last year, and, and I remember watching the final, and he, he was brilliant. That was the very first one of those, wasn't it, the, yeah. the amateur? He, he was, Great he split there as well, look at that. Then chance number three for Fleming. Yeah, this is his third, uh, third first go. If he doesn't take this one, uh, I don't really see any way back. Yeah, so he won the ultimate pool amateur, then turned professional, straight in with the big boys. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I watched that amateur one, and he played brilliant. He was really, really, really strong in it, and he beat some very good players. And You'd have thought, you know, when it come turns pro, it could do a bit of damage, but maybe that's why. Just maybe the the odd be shot that he, he doesn't see, or, or. Well, I wonder just if it's worth saying. I mean, the match that was actually scheduled for here was Drew Hughes and Gary Clark. And unfortunately, Drew Hughes is, was not well this morning, and I don't know what that, if if the match has been put back, but it, there was a change of schedule. At very short notice, and this match was obviously upgraded to the main table. Yeah. And it, so Ryan Fleming would have probably been preparing for an outside arena table, and all of a sudden he's been told, "By the way, you're on, you're yeah. on the main, your main table." Well, and I wonder if that sort of do you mean that's thrown him because it, Yannick it wouldn't phase him because he, he likes playing. Yeah. Out, and he's played out here two or three times yeah, anyway. Yeah, he's more week. used to it. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it does could affect your mind. Couldn't I, it? It, can, it can do. It can do. Yeah, if you're not prepared for something, uh, and they just throw you in at the table. Well, the table's playing a little different in, in the arena. Yeah. I mean, on the TV bit anyway. Um, they play, I think, a little quicker because the TV lights are very hot, so it tends to speed the cloth up a little bit. But also, the cushions seem to react a little bit differently on these tables as they do on the outside arenas. Yeah, Would you the, say that? The, the cushions are definitely spongier, so obviously that. Oh, I don't like that either. Well, he's on the red up the top. We can, I think he still get through to the one yeah. on the right-hand side, so he's okay. He really needs his frame now because if he, I think if he has misses three chances, it's, it's really going to affect you, isn't it, psychologically? Well, I mean, cause, yeah, like I say, Yannick's not the type of player that's going to hand you a lot of games, you know. He has to go out and win these games, and he's at three chances now. He might get these ones, but still, well, he can come back across for the... Well, I think he's just going to drop this in now. He doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball. The black ball goes up into the top right. Even if he comes back a bit further, he's looking at top left as well. He's got e either. Yeah. You yeah. just don't want to be in the middle of them. You want, you want to be on yeah. one or the other. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a very, very important clearance. This. Is he good or is he... He's in the middle. He's just... Well, slow, yeah, he's just he's going to go top left. I mean, there's no question. He's yeah. not going to play... Over to the right because it's more of a blind shot if he plays into the top right. It's, just it's tricky. Yeah, it's just missable, just especially after the first two frames. I was just about to say that, Roman. When you've when you've missed two sh two pots to win frames, and this is now a really big shot for Ryan Fleming. Oh, it's oh no, right. And he's left Yannick straight on the yellow at the bottom of the table as well. Well, would you believe it? Yes, it's just making Yannick's work so so easy. I feel sorry for him because I, I've been in this position before, and it, you know, th 
you're getting the chances and you're chucking them away and it, yeah, it, and it really and does hurt. And, really and, does. and it snowballs too. The, the, the more you nearly get to the stage, you, you go to the table and you don't want to be there. You know, no. you miss so many chances. Absolutely. Uh, you're nearly hoping your opponent just clears up. To I'll tell you what, <laughs> that is exactly right. It is, it's true. It sounds ridiculous, but it's absolutely true because you yeah. don't, don't give me another chance because yeah, I'm because sick of it. Look, we've all been there, you know, yeah. it's happened to everybody and, and it's maybe where Ryan's at at the moment. But he's going to be sat there thinking, I oh, should be 3 0 up. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you he's know, looking at 3 0 down. And, and, and most days it would be 3 0 up, you know, because he's, he's definitely good enough to. Because his break's been good as well. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you, I mean, you ask any player, what would you want if you could have anything? Obviously, winning with the, every frame you play it would be the answer. But if you get a minute, you'd say, oh, "Just want to make a decent break and get a ball." Yeah, you just want chances. I mean, well, Chris Melly said yesterday. He said, "All you require of any match," he said, "I just want seven chances." Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah. I, I think. <laughs> I think I about uh, twenty. There's not many matches. You just get seven chances, and then no. you, you take the seven. You know. Maybe in Chris's word, not in ours, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. like that. In Chris's world, good old Mr. Mellon, bless him. Cracking player, though. Oh, unbelievable, unbelievable talent. He's a character as well. Well, he's absolutely perfect here. Yannick Buffet, there's going to be no mistakes from the Frenchman. Well, what about young Damsa? Some, some achievement but he hasn't he's a great player absolutely oh, he's a, phenomenal he's, a, he's always been a great player but, but he can play both sides because he can grind out yeah, result yeah, and he no, can attack he's, he can got a, he's got a great all around game but it just he seems to have took his game to a completely different level he was always a brilliant player yeah. but this, this last year year and a half two years he's just completely turned into a machine like. this is the thing you know most players go out there and they Last night, Christophe Lambert went out, couldn't get a ball off the break, and you know he's queuing really well and couldn't get in. Yeah. And he's having the opposite. He's he's getting great breaks and, and, and just falling over. Look at that for a split. Yeah, that's lovely. I mean, that was the proper like the explosion you want from the pack. Yeah, I mean, he, he's hit those that completely plum. Yeah, that's lovely. I think it's a really that's all. You know, if you can buy a break, you buy that one, don't you? Yeah. Uh, pretty much. And a lovely layout too in the yellows. Yeah. I think all the yellows are pretty good. But on a normal day, you would say, yeah, there's a great chance here. But just from what we've seen. Well, he's got an easy start, a yellow. Yeah. I think his biggest problem is just getting out, just getting out past these reds and giving himself an easy second yellow or such. He needs a finish and he needs to knock in a black ball and he'll just settle him a little bit, but he, well, is he, I'm, will he's I'm not, left it too late. I'm not, not understanding. Oh, no, he, need, he, needs, he needs out of there now, really. Yeah. But it's, it's Fees presented with another possible finish. So you go down the rail here, Ronan. I just can't understand why he didn't take yellows. You know, Yannick had the option there. He took yellows, even though they're harder now than, than they were. When Not only that, he had an easy starter at the yeah, top yeah, of the that, table over the back. I mean. It just, it just doesn't, doesn't make sense. I just think he's completely lost the plot. He's, he's just brain fried, probably. That's just. But but that's what happens. You, you actually get nearly embarrassed, and, and that's what I say. You nearly just want the, the other player to clean up all the time and, and save you the embarrassment. Unfortunately, it does happen. Yeah, that, that's happened. I've, I've had it myself, so there's no there's no yeah, shame. Yeah, it's happened to every, every I've had player. Absolute nightmares. All of a sudden, and the worst thing is when when you when it, you're going through this in your mind. Every time you look at you know you present with a pot, and even if it's easy, it, it, it now looks like you're trying to hit beach balls into polo yeah. mints. It, and, and, it, it and just looks impossible. And, and to be honest, Yannick's not really helping his cause because Yannick keeps falling over too and giving him another chance. Yeah. When, when 
really, that's not what Ryan wants at the moment. He just wants Yannick to put him out of his misery. When you're looking at an easy, look an easy layout to, to finish the game, you start imagining ways that you can completely mess yeah, it up, yeah, don't you? Well, you start thinking of ways yeah. to, to foul and, yeah. and miss pots. Yeah, you're just seeing, seeing bad things happen all the time. The mind is a wonderful thing. They're going to play the double here. He lost a turn. I don't think he's looking at cutting it in. A better shot if he can get it. I don't know what he's going to do with this. Well, he's yellow. landed nicely there. There's a yellow pass into the left hand centre. It doesn't look it's like a bit it. tight. He's got a good angle to come off the two cushions and, and get into it, but I think the loss of turn shot would have been pretty good there. Do you think Yannick's maybe got to the impression that he thinks he'll get another go regardless of what he's doing? Well, possibly. He's played a great shot here. Oh, it's a wonderful shot. That's a great shot. But he's still a work to do. I don't think the eight ball goes. This is well, this isn't an easy pot for a start up into the top right. Where's the eight ball going? Is it, can I get back enough to double it in the middle? Or? I think he'd be looking at a double in the corner because I think because of the slide on the cushions on this table, he could maybe play it a little bit north of where you would normally play it, but it will yeah, skid it in, yeah. do you think? Yeah, I don't know if I can get back to the middle of, of that angle. But a double to the corners or something. Yeah. And he's going to play this with a lot of left hand side to check the ball and straighten up the angle now. Yeah, I, f I fancy him getting this. It's, it's good on him as you can be for a double. Well, you, like I say, you want to play with the with, with left hand side and sort of screw it, stun it. Play it plain ball. I think it's a slide and hit the red. Right. He had to play left hand side of that to square the angle. Yeah, I think he had to hit it a bit harder even. I think you really have to commit to them shots and, and, and punch them. However, he's not left anything completely easy for Ryan Fleming. And Ryan will not be, uh, not be full of confidence going to the table there. I mean, he doesn't have to go, you know, he can play some sort of a snooker over. I think he was actually trying to go over there and just play the... the I'll be tempted over. to take the red at the top now, Ronan, come down into these two. Yeah, but you, can just see, you can just see bad things happening here. You can see him potting white or something. Mm. Uh, these are the type of... See, see when you're struggling and everyone's going against you, this is the type of thing you're left with. And, not nice. Played that one well. But this is going to be some tough finish. I think so. I'll pot the one that's easy into the middle, up the rail, and leaves himself to cross double back into the centre, isn't he? Yeah, or, or just leave himself the angle. To, just get, get himself a good angle so now he'll come across for the one down the, the other rail. I think when I'm, when I'm not playing particularly well and, I'm, and I don't like rail shots you know when, when you're not queuing yeah. fluently I'd rather have the double for the double yeah it could actually take the double now and come around but you know. that's a yeah, beautiful he's, pop he's hit that well but he's had it nearly too well it's, it's just okay the thing is it's when he gets to walk just on the finishing line is yeah. when it's sort that's yeah. when it really happens yeah you, you could nearly see him getting a kick or something here just the way the matches went you, you can just Sort of see bad things happen. Well, I hope Ryan Fleming pots this cleanly down the rail and let's let's get him on the yeah. off the mark because it's been frustrating for the young man. It's and that's a lovely shot. Ball. Now, surely this time, as he looks, it's, yeah. it's like an ironic little gaze across yeah. there when he just that's where the referees are all sat. I have to say, but where, where has this been? Well played, Ryan Fleming. That's a good finish. Yeah, it was. And I'll tell you what, was. that was it. A damn sight harder than oh. all the chances he's missed previously. Yeah, I, I was, and it was ten times harder than what it would normally be, just for the fact of what he's been through. The first There'll be some relief there now because you don't want to go out there and, and no, at least hit a pat zero. Yeah, at least it showed people, you know, what he can do. Brought up playing in the pub that was. He's made a ball flaming off the break. 
You're going to have to take the yellows. Yellow balls in place. That's what happens when you're struggling. Oh, you had a good go here. But we'll see extension coming in a second. Yeah, uh, I don't think it matters now. It's just no. part out. They'll still call it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's Yannick. Uh. Well, leave I, I leave to nothing to chance. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, he has to do what he has to do. So I can't fault him for that. No, not at all. It's a cutthroat tournament. It is, it is. Because yeah. you know full well <laughs> your opponent will do it to yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, he's played one here. Yes, he's got a lucky nose. Got it. Yannick in a snooker. Not that it's going to make any difference at all to the outcome of this match. In fact, you can see it all along. And this is tracked it perfect. So he's maybe going to get to the seven. Finish the match off. I play quickly now and try and get to the oh, seven. I think he is. I think this is. Looks better on your resume. Yeah. See, when you see those matches when they haven't got the seven, you think, well, he's just grinded that out, isn't he? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, this is seven, two looks bad. It's been pretty clinical from Yannick Bofis, but he has been gifted a few frames this morning by young Ryan Fleming. And down goes the black. Yannick Bofis progresses to the next round. Is pretty well known, England, England international, for a good number of years. He's a fast attacking player. Dom, we've uh, seen many times on, on stream, and uh, we know what he's capable of. It's a well matched game. It's hard to pick a favourite from these two. Yeah, I think it is. I think. Um, Dave probably doesn't play as much as he used to or too much. He, he's trying to enjoy it a bit more, whereas I suppose Dom's a, he's a well well practiced professional, you know. Um, he's playing a lot in a lot of tournaments. Not sure Dave enters many other tournaments other than the Ultimate. So you'd maybe have to say Dom's a bit match sharp yep. compared to compared to Dave, but you know, they're just it's just the way the balls go, really. Once, uh, once you get to that level, anyone can beat anyone. That, of course, not the start that Dom was looking for when he when he won the lag. But uh, it gives Dave Fernandez his first opportunity at the table. As we look at the table, he's gone for he's gone for reds. It's, it's a bit of a pickle, isn't it? Whichever you've gone for here it was going to be a bit messy. That's a it's a nice shot to develop that red, but. The cue ball's just gone a little bit stray. He does have this um, back up at the top of the table, which is his plan. But um, a can bit he avoid the end off? Yeah, I know. I was going to say a bit tricky with the cue ball. I think he can he can play the red into the cushion, cushion first like that, give it a flick. Just no control over the red. That was the only problem. If yes. it, obviously, if he landed straight behind it, he could have made sure the red stayed over the pocket and he'd have had a nice chance. But probably looks like he's not going to get out here. Unless it's a ridiculously thin cut on either of the balls, one at the very top or the one at the very bottom. Not a nice shot ever, let alone frame one. So this is action from the last 64. Um, some pot. qualifying games have already gone ahead this morning. Very good pot there. That's a good shot. Yeah, Carla Donahue is um, won his first match. Brian Halko, seven frames to nil. 
good number of games in action. You can, of course, keep up with all of the scores via the Ultimate Pool app. There's a dedicated live scoring platform. That's a really nice start from Dave. Dave Fernandez leading 3 0, breaking in frame four. He finds the ball. Again, cue ball was racing around the table. He's um, again squirted off the, the side of the pack. Actually, the cue ball hit below the middle pocket, which shows how poorly he really did time that. He's aiming for the centre, for the very middle of that front ball to bring the cue ball back up the middle of the table. And he's probably hit at half ball to get the ball below the middle pocket. Yeah, I said to someone the other day, it should be a foul. If you do that, if you, yeah. hit, below the, if you hit below the middle, it should be a foul. Yeah. Shouldn't, shouldn't be allowed. Shouldn't be allowed to continue at the table, and, and you miss hit it like that. But they, they always seem to be the break, be the breaks of where people make balls. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what we'll see from now on. Everyone try and hit below the middle. That, that's that's the way. That's the way to bottle a ball. It was, it was that bad. It was almost a cut break. Yeah. <laughs> That'll get people talking, won't it? The cut break. So, so some people definitely not a fan of that. Yeah. What about yourself? How do you feel about it? I don't know, really. That's a good question. I've never really thought about it. I mean, I don't... You know, when I watch people do it, I don't think, um, you know, it, it's a cop-out. I mean, it, for me, um, it, it's another skill. Like, I mean... Yeah, I guess I'm in favour of it. I don't, I don't see why you need to smash the front of the pack. It's, it's, um, you know, it's like saying you have to, you have to come off the side of the pack in snooker. You don't. I mean, you can, you can go back cushioning into the back of them as Mark yeah. Williams does now and again. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think the cut break has like revolutionised the game for some people. Um, some people please. had a weak break. Now suddenly can consistently make a ball. Um, and I do think I do think it's a skill in itself. I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's some people that think it should be banned and they should find something to take it out of the game. Yeah. I don't think that will never happen. Um, and I do. Uh, I don't like it myself, um, but I understand why people do it. Do you not use it at all? You've never. Never. Have you no. tried it? A little bit, yeah. Um, and I will go to it at tournaments sometimes if I'm struggling to rack the balls up. You know, you just go. There are certain venues that you tend not to break well at, and sometimes that could be due to the cloth or maybe other reasons. I'm, I don't really know, but um, there is one club in uh, Milton Keynes that I, I tend to cut break there um, just because I always struggle to rack the balls up. Yeah. Um, and I, I, my cut break's okay. I just feel. I feel if you're breaking well and hitting them really nice on the front ball, you get a different feeling as a as a pool player. And I just think if you're breaking well, it brings confidence into yeah. the rest of your game. So yeah. if you get that flush contact that yeah. you're looking for, it just brings so much more confidence in, into everything into your game. I mean, it's 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 definitely not for me personally. I mean, I've. I've never really used it. I've, you know, I've practiced it a couple of times, and I I just love the feeling. Exactly what you just said. Love the feeling of flushing yeah. that front ball, and just you know, just seeing everything split, see a couple of balls go in. There, there's no better feeling, and no, um, and, and I don't not. think you get that from a cut break. So I, it's not for me. I'd never I'd never use it in a match. But you know, if if it works for you, you know, I mean. You look at Mark Boyle, it's absolutely revolutionised his game. He was a great player before, but then he found a break that works for him and he just became an absolute beast. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand why people do it. I think the rule set can play a part as well. I, you're not surprised to see Black Ball Rules players doing it more um, because this is probably, I think it's an awful rule off the break that you get. Uh, cue ball in and beyond the line and a free shot you kind of you get the world given to you don't you yeah. um, whereas at, at these rules it's not it's no different to a dry break really is it going in off yeah. 
big treble here yeah. needed. Absolutely. And they're that they're they're not not nice on these these rails when they're so new. It slides so much. Very the hard yellow. to judge. Oh, oh he's fluked gosh. another. <laughs> Bravo, Dom. Is there, I'll give you a clap. Is, is is there a player anywhere that has to put his hand up more often than Dom? No, he does do it on purpose sometimes. Though I will tell you that he will do it on purpose. Clawing himself back into this game from 3 0 down. So Dave still has that one break of serve, but again, that's just a just an untimed break. Yeah, it's a nice, nice chance on the yellows as well. I think the ball is closest to goes into the right centre. Just didn't get the explosion on that no, pack no. there. Don't it's think he hit them. body came up as he. Yeah, hit. some people do that, don't yeah, they? they? Do. Yeah, Phil it, does it's it. a, yeah, it's a. Well, Phil needs to go back to doing it, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. he does. Yeah. Uh, that, that was I when keeps he was breaking at his best. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing with Phil is he was going in off more then than he is now. But my, my point to him has been a couple of times is, so if you say just do it on a 10 break basis, the way he was breaking back then, he was making a ball 8, 9 out of 10, yeah. going in off twice. Yeah. Now, where he's breaking soft, He's making a ball five times, but never going in off. Yeah. Well, I'd rather make a ball eight times. Absolutely. So, uh, for me, he just needs to go back to that break and start. There was a brilliant. Stand up and there going was a through it. Brilliant match um, in the Supreme Series, him and Mick Hill. Yeah. Um, which is is um, there on YouTube, and um, Phil was <coughs> using that break. He brings his body up to to create space for his arm to come through. And I think every single break he hit the front of the pack and the ball has bananaed and hit about six inches above the middle pocket and it did it on every single break in that match. Oh, really? I've never seen anything so consistent. Wow. But when it when it doesn't work, it bananas straight into the middle pocket. Yeah, so. yeah. That, that's the thing. He loses so much control when he does break like that. But just some people have said, you know, because of how slick the conditions are out in them arenas, should you be hitting the break as hard? Now... For me, that those that are taking a lot off the break, and I think you'll you maybe see more do it now because of how well Mark Selby broke when he was out there. Um, but I just feel when you're not hitting it at not your full power because nobody really hits out of their full power, but at your, at your normal break, I just feel you don't allow the balls to have another chance to go into the pocket when yeah. you break. They kind of have one chance, and if it if it doesn't go into that first pocket, it can't go off one or two cushions and go into another. Incidentally, in the meantime, it's gone wrong for Dom here. This is um, a horrible angle that he's left on this yellow. Almost can't avoid to careen into the red. And uh, suddenly he had to play a really good shot to get on that yellow. He did play a good shot, but that was tougher than it needed to be. And that was, again, just that, um, the pace just catching him out slightly. Under hit that one by probably six inches. Anywhere straight or or um, to the right hand side would have would have been absolutely fine. But he recovered well. And uh, that's a, a tight little clearance from Dom Cooney to get back on serve. Anyway, huge moment now, six frames each, Dom Cooney breaking in the decider. Can he oh my oh, goodness me. We, we made the issue out. <laughs> Was it a foul? No, I think he was okay, wasn't he? It's close to no, one, two, fine. three. Yeah. yeah, he's absolutely fine. We may see a shootout wow. then. We thought we had no chance of it, but... Oh, the, he's, you know, he's made this red, has he? No. It would have been lost a turn anyway, wouldn't it? It would have been lost a turn, yeah. Um, what do you do? Uh, I mean, do you just accept the the six? I mean, there's no one pushing the boat out here, surely. No, no one's going it's for a just, finish. It's, 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 it's the only way you can lose is by going for something crazy here. I think I'd be just flicking off the yellow over the bottom corner and just dropping the red in. All, pla even all just, play in the loss of turn. Play the, play the plan. Just play the loss of turn. And Either way, it was going to be loss of turn. It was just yeah. whether he, he decided to flick off the ball and do it with a cue ball or play the long plant. 
I mean, does does Dave have a free go? Does he kind of like just 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 play the one over the pocket, smash into the yellow, and try and get into the pack and have a? Have he's, a op he's opened them all up. Yeah. He's not actually on a ball here, so we will see another safety. Um, it, it will get it will get to the stage in in the in the match where somebody gets a free go. But mm. Dave has They're open now. just gone favourite, really, yeah. from this position. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dom needs to um, probably, if he probably get some covering fire in it, doesn't he? He's, he's, looked to, he's looked to play the loss of turn there. He's played to pull, pop the ball into the centre, then cannon the red onto the yellow, get that loss of turn. Then he played a loss of turn again this shot, tried to take two of Dave's balls off, but... He's just going to hide the cue ball in behind the, the yellow. Mm. Don't think there's an attacking option. Uh, yeah. I could go cushion first, but uh, the red's in the way. I think he should just go cushion first and yeah. just bump the yellow. Yeah, just just bump the it. one closest to the red. Yeah, and then all of his balls are. Oh, he's actually. Well, that we knew that weren't going to go in because Dom's lipped out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, he's got the snooker there, so. I know he's not promoted his ball, but there's a good chance of ball in hand, and he's got options. So Dave's favourite in this frame now. Yeah. Dom just needs to make sure of contact on a red. Nearly a time foul, but he was okay. That's actually okay. I mean, he's pushed the red across the yellow now, and um, well, actually, well, from this angle, it still looks like you can. Going to play a billiard. Pot it. So he's on. So. So you could. If that yellow doesn't go, he can play this yellow off of the other yellow. Yeah. Um, just to just to open it up and yeah, suddenly Dave is a, a big favourite. Oh. oh, that's what he played. He has played it, and I don't think he needed to. He has had, he's actually been very lucky. But Dom's just Dom's happy that that error's made. Yeah. He's just trying to run round. He's not. The loss of turn is tricky here. I'd almost be tempted to play it and. He's not he's even playing it. Yeah, he's going to play the same shot he played a second ago and just yeah. leave Dave in behind. He's left it off the off the he's yellow. This is a bad the, shot. It really is. I actually think he could have played the loss of turn and screwed to sit the white by the two reds. Dave's not guaranteed to be on a ball, though. No, yeah, he's, had, he's had to bump into them and he's awkward queuing now. He's not on the ball over the top pocket. He's, this is a fiddly shot in the middle it is. on a 15-second shot clock. And it will leave leave the game for Dom. It's a good part. How confident are you feeling? Confident he'll play the one in the middle like this. Oh, and he's just missed it. Has wow. he left a ball? He has left a ball. Dom should play the one into the bottom left. I think. He's gone the other way. He's, oh, he's, he's okay. He's been a touch fortunate. He could play the one into the left middle, to be this, fair. Yeah. yeah, yeah, left middle, maybe the shot. Depends how straight he is. Depends what angle he's got, yeah. Punch it, no, he's okay. We're going to, I think we're going to see a typical team-blessed victory. <laughs> it's been a great game. I mean, in terms of in terms of standard, we've seen better, but it's been nip and tuck, and you've never really been able to pick a winner. Yeah, sometimes th these are the games that you want to watch, yeah. you know, and yeah. Dom's Dom just showing the world that why he's tarnished me with this lucky name. So big, I'm proud of that yeah, one. Yeah, big puff of the cheeks from Dom Cooney, and uh, he shakes hands. He will be absolutely over the moon, uh, over the moon, Dave, uh, with a smile on his face. But I think it's an iconic smile. That was a really good game. I enjoyed commentating on it. Thanks very much for joining me, Luke. Thank you, mate. With me, Tony Holgate, and alongside me in the commentary box, none other, none other than the great Chris Mellin. And oh, we've got Cameron Tony, who's about to break off, and he's playing Rob Warren. And Cameron Tolly, cracking, cracking player, Cameron, isn't he? Yeah, I've not, I've not really seen a great deal of him. Uh, I think we're going to see an attacking game here. Both, both players are attacking minded so uh, you know, first break there Cameron using the cut break and he can only really pot a red and at first glance there's two reds tied up we try to force that one in it's a bit of a strange opening shot and Rob Wall will get his first taste of the main table here at Blackpool yeah and the reds now are that bad really <coughs> Is he looking at playing the plan on the yellows? I think I prefer reds. 
He can try and land on the red that is just above the yellow is queuing over next. Well, right. a little bit red too hard, right. but he has got the choice of the double. What he can play with the red that's tied up in the top left of the and corner of the table, he can pot the red next to the eight ball and use the yellow to bring that red out. Or he could actually play another double. Very quick player is uh, Rob Wan. Yeah, he's not messing about, Chris, that's for sure. He's got a little angle here, he could cut this into the middle. And try and bump that red out, but if he does go into that little cluster on the left hand side, he could knock everything in, into it like a big bunch there and it'll, it'll end up hampered with all of it. Yeah, and he, he has to land on the red that he's going into off this shot, really. Yeah, for me, that was never the shot in a million years, but I tell you what, he's had a little bit of form there. Would you play the red onto the yellow now and, and, and pot them both in the same shot? Yeah, I think he has to, but it's important that he makes sure that even if he doesn't pot the red after the yellow, that he stays right over the pocket. I think I want to be stunning that a little bit. He's played it brilliantly. Great shot. A little bit short again of position, but shouldn't cause any bother. I always like to play them just below the middle of the white. It just gets the, the top spin on the second ball quicker. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It transfers the, the top spin onto the object ball and that's not a great shot from Robbie. He wanted a bigger angle there. He wanted to be able to nudge the yellow away, really. He's got a bit of angle, though, Chris. I mean, he's, but he's going to have to pump this off two rails a bit aside, isn't he? Yeah, well, is he on a cannon? Well, I don't know what he's played I there. think I'd have gone the other way, off the, off the bottom rail and off the right, wouldn't you? Yeah, and if you're going to play that shot, you can either play the shot you're talking about, Tony, or you can just stun it off one cush with a bit of pace. As long as you go, go towards the centre of the table, you're always going to be on the eight ball. Well, is he trying to double this in the middle pocket? This will be some shot. No, that's not going to reach. Well. You wouldn't expect Rob Warren to trip over on that finish. Did the donkey work? Yeah, he did. And not left Cameron anything easy, really. I mean, he's got a, a pretty easy snooker. I think I'd like to clip off this yellow and stick in behind the one on the side cushion. Just don't hit it too hard, because then you've got two blockers for the eight ball. The main thing is here. I think he's just looking at the shot you suggested there, Chris. Yeah, he just doesn't want to leave a shot at the eight ball, you know. Worst case scenario. Well, he's had to come down and be careful with the cue ball. Well, it's a great shot that he's played there. It is. Unbelievable. And it's so risky because if that yellow came out an, an extra half inch, Rob would be able to go off the bottom cushion and pot that eight ball. And obviously he snookered on it now, but he could swerve around the yellow and kick it in. If he pots this, this will be a miracle shot. Oh, he wasn't, wasn't far, far away. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That would have been one for the highlight, really, if he got that. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't far off, you know. Double kissed on the way back. Yeah, an extra half inch, I think he'd have potted that. Cameron Tolly tried to go into those two yellows and he's over, over screwed it. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit risky. I mean, he had the, the option of the plant there. Now he's in a little bit of trouble here, is Cameron. What does he play here? Does he cut the yellow in the top and come down the table and play the plant? Or does he play the double? I don't agree with this shot. No, I don't, I don't know what's coming down here. Oh, what a shot, as he potted the cue ball. Oh, oh good news, word. bad news. Good news, bad news. Well, I think that yellow at the bottom tail was just off the rail enough that it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but... Well, he's flirting with danger, that's for sure. He's played that shot well. It <laughs> yeah, that was nicely played there. and Just got to drop this in. Don't do too much with the cue ball. He does like to live on the edge, Cameron Tolley. 
Oh my word. Yeah, and you can't really play it at that pace and not expect it to turn slightly. You know, these tables have only been in a couple of days and it can take weeks for them to settle in properly. Which is true. And then goes the black and it's Rob Warren. I thought, well, it's kind of cheap because he's had practice for the six red shooter but having to uh, get the finish in under 48 seconds. Yeah, and that was... Uh, that wasn't a great rack from the ref, I have to say there. They didn't split at all. No. You know, we, we, nice we, talk, break. we talk about the break, but, you know, a lot of it does come down to how they are racked. And unfortunately, due to the rules, the players aren't allowed to check the rack. You know, there is, there is ways to find out which ball should go where roughly, depending on which balls are touching. Obviously, if you can't check the rack, then you're not going to know where they're meant to go. Well, we've got a new smart rack that's been used and implemented in this tournament. So you haven't got the, 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 the complete triangle shape. You, they should be able to pack them in a bit tighter now. Yeah, they should be able to, but the, the sometimes there is gaps there. And I think it's general play on the table as well. If You know, the, the, the balls will come apart because there's little kinks maybe in the cloth. Yeah, there's an indentation under the front ball and the eight ball. You know, after a few days' play, that will happen. And Cameron's in all kinds of trouble here. He hasn't really got many options what to do. Not a bad shot. Not a bad shot, but Rob's still in control of this frame. There are two other matches being played at the moment on the side tables. I'll just give you a score update. Craig Waddingham is 2-1 up against Adam Basu. And Jimmy Croxton has just taken a 2-1 lead against Amir Abdelati Riyad from Morocco. How did Arfan get on Tony? Did he win? Or he, I think he was 5-4 down against uh, John McAllister. Arfan Dad was defeated 7-5 by John McAllister. Other results, John Rowe beat Emma Cunningham 7-0. Dom Cooney, that was incredible. I just saw the tail end of that one. He beat Dave Fernandez 7 6. That looked like it was headed for a six red shootout. Fernandez had a chance with a few seconds on the clock with his three yellows. He's pulled his arm at it, come away from the table, and Dom Cooney's knocked in his four reds in the black. And literally, I think he, he knocked the last the black in with four seconds left on the clock. Else so that was going six red shootout. So, quite a bit of drama there. Yeah, it's all happening today. And see there, Rob's missed the red in the centre. Wasn't an easy shot. Well, he's just gifted Cameron a great opportunity here. If you can make this yellow in the side pocket, then uh, they're all there. Nicely played. He'd love to be able to cut this ball on the right-hand side of the table down and come across and land straight on the one in the middle. Really wants to leave the one over the, the left corner to last to get on the eight ball. Worst case scenario, he's, well, he's going got to be playing, a pop ball. He's playing the shot that you suggested there, Chris. Has he got the weight right? He's OK. Well, I say he's OK. Well, he's got it's quite skinny into that middle, and it's just it's bumping into the other yellow that to try and develop it. Yeah, and he, he, he come back a bit straight at it. Yeah, he needs to get straight on that yellow in the middle. So he's, he may be forced to pot the one over the corner now. Well, he's playing the cannon. This is risky. The yellow could go safe. Yeah, it was just too risky for me there. I think you pop the other one in the corner and come across, play the one in the middle, then play that shot. Just looks a little bit nervous, does Cameron? Well, Rob's just had a huge kick there. Or in America, as they call them, skid. Yeah, well, then what looked a simple finish for Rob Warren has now become five times harder. Well, that's a very good recovery shot there from Wacker Warren. Yeah, very, very talented is uh, Rob. Very talented. His biggest downfall when he plays is himself. He's very hard on himself, and you know that's not a bad thing, but. What, you know, overcritical. Yeah, and he shows a lot of emotion when he's playing. Nothing wrong with a bit of emotion, Chris. Pop 
pots the ball great to be fair though Tony you know he's very clean with a lot of the pots played that nicely little cut in the corner now for Rob Warren to go into a 2-0 lead and it's in and Cameron Tolley's had two chances but he still finds himself 2-0 down and Rob Warren there have a little shake of the head I think it was for that kick wasn't it he just he, he was a little bit annoyed because he knew that it was it was a pretty simple finish but it wasn't his fault the deep end of the of the match bad break there from Rob that's not We're talking about the deep end of the match and deep end of the tournament how do you feel about not quite getting over the line last night then in the final against Stevie Dempsey yeah I mean I, I took most of my chances um, two or three frames where I didn't put a ball on the break could have made a, a difference but Stevie played really well he took took majority of his chances and you know the game's pretty cruel to be honest sometimes because he played an awful shot to get on the eight ball one of the frames snookered himself and missed it I cleared up and then it was his break next he broke and they come out absolute sitting and so he hasn't been punished really for making that mistake but you know that's the way the game goes he's played brilliant all year to be fair to him oh he has we were actually saying that. I was in here with Ronan McCarthy earlier today funny enough because you played a bit of quarter finals yesterday as well and he had a good chance didn't he at 6-5 up he said he's missed a ball to, to potentially go win 7-5 he said you've cleared up and then Broke cleared up and done him 7-6 yeah he won't tell you about the three flukes he had though will <laughs> they weren't flukes were they no he just missed by about six inches <laughs> <laughs> went in the opposite corner pocket but no listen me and me and Ronan have a lot of good banter together he's a uh, and a great at the game, a great guy, and uh, he's got a very dry sense of humour, as Ronan. I abs I absolutely love playing him, and uh, I've, I've got a really good record against Ronan, to be honest. But he's just one of them players where you know, you know yourself. You, you seem to have good records against certain players, and players who you think you should have good records against, you don't. They're called bogey players, Chris. That's nicely played there. Just wants to stop this cue ball dead because he wants to leave the yellow in the middle to last and then he can leave the gap between the reds to get on the eight ball. He has to be a little bit careful. He'd love to land as straight as possible. And the yellow in the centre pocket after Indeed. his next two shots. Yes, I know all about bogey plays. I'd be in a 64-man competition. I'd have 63 bogey players in it with me. Well, something's happened with the clock. Well, wasn't reset. No, I think he's going to have to start that one. Yeah, but it's just been done now, so there's no punishment there for Cameron Tolley. Yeah, he's got to be careful that he doesn't hit the eight ball. Just give himself the chance of potting the yellow, and I do believe he's going to have to use the top cushion, which makes the position more difficult. Just make sure the pot and give yourself a chance of the yellow. Nicely played. Well, could all the eggs it. are in one basket here. And he'd like to not be that close to the cushion. Yeah, it's, it's made a lot more difficult, this. Especially, like we've said, on the on this cloth, it's so responsive. I mean, you can you can play a stun shot full length of the table and it'll screw back. It's just so responsive, and this is, this is difficult to get on this. I'll tell you what, that's some effort. It's just a bit short. Yeah, and the problem was there, Tony, that... The harder he hits that shot, the more he's going to go wide with the cue ball. So he probably would have potted the red if it had hit that any harder. And obviously still would have been snookered. I think it's just a bit too... Well, it is too thin to try and cross-double this back into the other corner on the left-hand side. I'm not sure he's got an option. I think he may have to play that. Oh, what a shot from Cameron Tolley. That is absolutely huge. And I thought he didn't... <laughs> It didn't have the angle to do it. I thought it would skid off the rail. It would come too wide. And well, well, well. Brilliant shot. Yeah, that's the shot of the day for me. Brilliant Incredible. cross double there. That was very thin to play that. And he had no control of the cue ball. Was just relying on, you know, pure luck to keep it out of the pocket. But what a brilliant shot there from Cameron. He's breaking off. If he could make a couple of balls here. Oh, well, oh, made a couple of balls, but one of them he didn't want to make. Wow! Well, um, look at the, look how open these reds are as well, 
Chris. How many cannons did that cue ball take there? One, two, three, four. Wow. That was a fair, fair shunt around the table, wasn't it? Oh, my, oh word. my word. Is that the latest entry into the Grand National for next April? Well, I can't believe it. Over beach as we go. But why is he trying to screw the red out? I don't know. There is absolutely no reason to screw the red out. Look good in a trick shot night, though, wouldn't it? I mean, the red's in the open. It's, it's actually easier if it's near the cushion on, the, on, on these tables because they play quite generous. I was about to say to you, look how open the reds are. And, he, you know, he needs some quick frames on the board and they were there perfect. But now he's just, well, just handed the, the match, basically, to Rob, Rob Warren. Oh, what's Rob played there? He's got away with that one. And that's what I was saying to you earlier. Skidded into when we the spoke. It just hits the cushion and skids. Yeah. Because it's so responsive and so new. But you have to feel a little bit sorry for Cameron. He's, he's struggling out there, to be honest. And he, like I said, oh, wow. Well, this 15 seconds of shot is certainly <laughs> sorting out the men from the boys, if you like. <laughs> well, he's having a chat to himself there. Mm. And... Uh, Knowing Rob like I know him, he'd be straight on social media cursing himself. Well, that yellow must go off the red there, and then past the black, it's perfect on it. Yeah, just a night. Don't want to hit this too hard, got to give it time to slide in. No, don't screw that shot. He's already screwed it, Chris, you can't stop yeah, him now. I think if you leave it half ball into the top pocket, the yellow that he's going to play now, you can push off the side cushion and play for the yellow in the top pocket that's tied up. You may play off, off the red here. That's a good shot. Very good shot from Cameron Tollick. Yeah, he's got to play for the red down the cushion after this one. He's got to screw back. We well, could play for the centre pocket, to be honest. Wouldn't be a bad option. I think I've been chalking it. Oh, he's proper over it, that one. Wow, he's, well, he's over it that a long way. way. Well, this is going to have to go in dead weight. Yeah, and, and the shot he should have played was to play for the other yellow down the cushion, the one that's going to play last if he gets on it. As it was a free shot, really. I still think he'll get this. Nicely played. Oof, this is horrible. Well, he hasn't got to do anything with the cue ball. He just, it's just plain ball pot it. Yeah, he's just got to get somewhere near Thank this in know. there. The pocket will probably accept it. I mean, if he, if he covers even, it, it wouldn't be a disaster. Nowhere near. Missed that by a long way, and he, he kind of jabbed at that. I think he still had that. Do you remember the, the ball he missed a couple of frames ago down the other rail, where, where he missed it by a fair distance? He's probably still had that in his mind, you know. Well, the balls are now there for Rob Warren to win this match and progress. Two balls away from the last 32 for Rob Warren. You'd have to say he's been good value for it, really. He's been far the more crisper potter. Yeah, certainly, without a doubt. And I think he deserves to win. You know, if you're going to speak the truth about this match, I mean, Cameron has missed probably loads eight or nine chances in this match. Well, in goes the black ball, and Rob Warren beats Cameron Tolly by seven frames to three. Mark Shepard with you for this one as Geo breaks off. Big, powerful break for the first frame. And a pretty good split when you look at where these yellow balls have finished up. Really throwing his whole body through that. Good connection on the front of the pack. This is exactly what he wanted for the first frame. Yellow balls in play. It's not been the best of weekend so far for Gio. He lost in the preliminary round match yesterday, so he's had two days off. Opened his account with a win over Lee Anderson in a deciding frame this morning. So started event two a bit better than he did event one. His opponent, though, has been in great form this weekend. Jordan Shepard reaching the semi-finals of yesterday's event. 
ultimately losing out to an informed Chris Melling. It's the nature of being lower down the rankings and not getting so many results that you don't spend so much time out in these main arena tables. Good chance this for Gio to experience the big time. We've seen him perform well out in the main arena before. Good shot to get on the last ball. In an ideal world, he would have been able to play the ball to the top left earlier on in this visit. He had a bit too much angle on that last shot, so I had to play for the one to the top right corner. Shouldn't be a problem there. Able to swing the cue ball round. He's creating himself a bit of work here, though. Natural angle taking him back towards the bulk end of the table, so. So either going to have to commit to a long great ball or power this in. Well, he's going to be very disappointed with that. That's a bad miss in the circumstances. Really good break, really good layout. Caused himself an unnecessary problem with the last couple of positional shots. Jordan Shepard won't be able to believe his luck. This was a frame when he should never have been anywhere near the table. Jimmy Croxton steps into the commentary box. Hot off the table from your last match. I had to go get a drink. Yeah, I think they've given me a little bit of a... They've given me three minutes grace to go get a drink, so I've got it there just in time. <laughs> yeah, it's warm out there. It's uh, Especially when the 15 second kicks in, you're running around like a madman. With the, you know, the joker shuffle and all that, it's, um gets you, uh, gets you a bit hot under the collar, mate. Well, I'm glad to see you went. You won. When I saw the schedule, I was a bit concerned you might not be in the best of moods if you hadn't. Yeah, no, I, I won. Um, yeah, it was, I don't actually think I played too bad. I broke well and obviously plays a big part. A um, couple of areas I'd like to sort of eradicate. And I had a couple of, I had a bad roll off and a, and a bad kick, to be honest, in a couple of the frames. But it happens and you just got to get on with it, haven't you? So, uh, yeah, happy to get the win and that's all that counts. So, back on, I think, tonight. I'm not sure what the schedule looks like, but... In a, definitely in a happier mood, that's for sure. Good to see a smiling joker in the commentary box. Well, meanwhile, talking of errors, one from each of the players so far, Gio should absolutely have cleared up off his own break. Jordan gifted a chance he wouldn't have expected, uncharacteristically didn't take. That's a nice shot, Brazzi left a gap behind the yellow. He may have. He could be half tempted here to just to play the loss of turn shot and... and Sort of say to Gio, right? Have a go at that. Have a go at that long black, but I don't think he will. Yeah, nice shot. Oh, hold on to your hats, folks. Double incoming. Yeah, played a good pot there. Didn't really know where that second red was going. He was always cannoning quite full into it. Just had a chance to luck a bit. I think he's going down the rail here with a little bit of left hand side just to bring the cue ball down. Oh, he's not. Oh, he's close. Oh, it's all happening in this frame. <laughs> Well, if you're looking for a chance to cool down, <laughs> that's not what you wanted. Oh, going in this first frame. Good clear sighter at this yellow. Don't know if he can avoid. Yeah, looks like he thinks he can stun away from. Oh, yeah, actually, it was quite straight in the end, so able to screw back for the black. Well, it's going to be relieved to get this frame one because taking him a couple of more chances than it should have done. I think unquestionably this first frame more important for Gio. Jordan's the player that's been out on this main arena table a lot more this weekend. A great semi-final run yesterday. There's always a couple that seem to go a little bit messy. Especially when you're down in a match, when you need them open, you need, you know, good chances. It's always a, there's always a little bit of intricate work to do, it seems. Option's a bit limited because of the position of the cue ball, so 
forced into going for that right over the pocket. It's got to be more clinical this time. He let Jordan back in that last frame. A bit lucky to end up winning it. Can't afford any more mistakes. Oh, well, that's so wide. So, so wide of target. Yeah, I mean, even if he gets the plant in and it, and it doesn't drop in, he gets the pocket and, and you know, gives Jordan something to think about, whereas now everything's just wide open again. Hard to imagine Jordan missing from here. Great chance to get over the winning line. Just looking at what angle he wants to leave the ball to the left centre after this one. Doesn't want to be straight. Probably a little bit straighter than he, he wanted, but he's just okay, I think. Yeah, better too much than too little angle. He's getting close to getting straight. So he's had to kind of force it. Well, he's forced it with quite a lot of side in the end. He's played that pretty well from the position he was in. So just opting to keep it simple. Rolls the ball along the bottom cushion. Knew this ball would be hanging to the right centre. And that's all she wrote for Gio Edgar. That's the end of his involvement in this Pro Series weekend. Played a few decent shots, but ultimately just didn't have quite enough in the tank. Jordan Shepard steamrolls on. He's got one of the game's great young rising stars, Luke Gilbert. Breaking off, world under 23 champion, European under 23 champion, and European men's champion, I believe. And I'm pleasure to be joined by Dom Cooney. And this is a lad you know very well. Yeah, we're uh, kind of known as Team Bless because, well, we're both known to be reasonably lucky. But after my game this afternoon, I ain't really got a leg to stand on with that with that discussion. I can't really give Luke much stick but I mean as you listed off there he's had a fantastic year he's got a brilliant CV um, he's doing good things and uh, playing really well so one thing he's got in his locker which I mean that was a disaster so I'm actually delighted to see that because I can imagine <laughs> he had a field day in my game so uh, well just sort of just going back to your game I actually came in and caught the tail end of it and uh, it was dramatic to say the least because yeah, I, I, I looked at it and I thought at six or you're headed for the six red shootout and then your opponent had a had a, a little chance didn't he yeah he had a good chance Dave and um, he, he's re he is a really good player Dave and wow just stopped there because for that cue ball was going to go in um, he would normally knock that in oh like Pete Sher he's known as Big Dog and he's put under in the middle in brackets that's quite funny <laughs> Um, yeah, Dave would normally knock that ball in, but it was one of them where, because of the way the match went, it was a bit of a one of them frantic matches where you kind of both you both at it, you both fall over the gaff. And but what I liked about it happened. when you were at the table there, you had 48 seconds and three balls, and a lot of players were making mistakes. I think that's not an awful lot of time, and, and, and played them too quickly. And the way I looked at it when I watched you play, you, you were quite measured. You knew exactly how long to play each ball keep in prime position and you ran it out just yeah. with, a, with about what four seconds uh, left yeah I, got, I, mean, I, I did get away with it but as you say um, it was one of them where I mean don't get me wrong I expect to get the finish every time but the first shot I, I had to play a bit of a cannon hope it not hope but it was kind of half relying on landing good and then just um, you wanted to just play it out where if you do break down he can't clear up um, which in the end, it, it, it wasn't a factor, but um, as we come back to the action, Pete's hung the red there, which... Well, it's just looking at Peter Mullaney's rise to the pros. All last season, he was on the Challenger Tour, and apart from one event where I think he got to last last two, he's mainly out first and second rounds of every event, and then the last event of the season, he won it, yeah, which catapulted him into the professional game, which is uh, quite an achievement. 
Yeah, he's been around a long time, Pete. He has played quite a few years, but he's one of them players. He sort of, well, I mean, you, you sort of summed him up there with his his season last year. He kind of doesn't doesn't do much for a while, and then he pops up with a deep run. And he, I mean, when he is when he's game when he's playing well and when he's on, he he is a handful for anyone. And um, as you see, Luke played cushion first there to try and hold the angle so that he could and get a little bit closer the to the yellow as well, Dom. I think now he's going to have to either play for the plant in the middle, which he just comes to look at, or drop it in for the skinny left middle as we look, which is ultra tough. So. There you see he's played a good shot. A cracking shot it. there from Luke Gilbert. Now that was played by a young man with bags of confidence. Yeah, he'll certainly have stacks that he's... Uh, he sort of dominated the, the his age group. He, he he's in an age group where he, in all truth, he's heads and shoulders above everyone else. That the so he, he's in the form of winning a lot of matches, which obviously breeds confidence and a lot of time on the stream in the arena tables and feels at home out there. And he's got a massive, massive break, which sometimes it allows you to make a few mistakes in a match because your break's that good. You get like three chances. Well, there's no mistakes there from Luke Gilbert. Top three breakers, in my opinion. And he's not let me down. Didn't quite flush the top ball. But he's not making a liar of you, Dom. No. Normally, he is really consistent, kind of like Jack Whelan style, getting that cue ball straight up and down the spot. Yeah, Jack Whelan's got a great break. Which is, I mean, so important on the, especially on these tables as well. And the fact that Luke's playing this yellow tells us that the yellow goes past, which means, I mean, if you break like this every time, you can't fail to win matches because if you're getting these layouts every single time you break, you fly in, aren't you? And the confidence is building with every ball as well. Yeah, and every time you're clearing up, you just get more and more confidence and. He's just got to pick his gap here because it's a little bit fiddly. There might have been value in playing the ball into the middle now. Coming around for this yellow that he's just potted. Might have been a bit thinner than I thought, but he's played it really well. Let's just come on and off the rail and land somewhere where the yellow ball is that he's potting now. You're talking about Gareth Potts, only 6-4 down to Josh Kane at the moment. Right, that's interesting because I've got the winner of that match. Oh, well, I thought that's why I mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest with you. I mean, at this level, you don't care who you play, but I've never played Gareth, uh, and I really wanted, I was hoping to get to play him. So I'm nothing against Josh. I get on really well with Josh. He's a great lad, and uh, but I would like to see Gareth win that just to. Elsewhere, we've got Christoph Lambert five three in front against Chris Hampson. Sean Story's one all with Gary Clark. Other results, Phil Parkins beaten Scott Gillespie 7-5. Declan Brennan fires back into recognition. He's, he's won 7-1 against Dejan Gretsch. Wow, you see a perfect break there from Luke. Look at that. And the other result, I can tell you, Tom Cousins has beaten Matt Cook by seven frames to two. So when Luke broke there, he was thinking he's going to have a little bit of work to do. But as it happens, this red just trickles over the middle. And that's the perfect ball to break into these two tricky balls. Well, oh, he coming a little bit harder than that, and he's potted it a touch thick, didn't he? What does he do here, Dom? Yeah, he kind of gets safe. I think, do you know, the only shot I think he can <coughs> play off the ball closest to the bulk line. It's really difficult because the cue in is horrific over the yellow, and try and get the cue ball somewhere underneath the red and the eight ball. But he can't really get any side on it. And I wonder if, you, if he's got half the cue ball, he can maybe cue out. I know he's, you're having to play with a load of side, but there you see, it was very. That's not a bad difficult. That's not a bad effort at all, really. That's as, that's as good as you're going to do from there. Yeah, he's done the right thing. He sort of tried to get the cue ball in that area and used the red to make a nuisance of itself up in that corner. But Pete has got a go at a double here. If he makes a double, he's going to have a good chance to get out. Well, he's placed a double into the corner. The cue ball's naturally going straight into the yellow that's he has next to him. He's, he's I'm surprised he's playing this one. Treble. He's got the treble. Wow. And look where he's landed. Absolutely Peter perfect. 
Are you going to say he's played a treble? Uh, I didn't see him apologise, so I might give him the benefit of the doubt. Because I know him, I do know, let's say I know Pete pretty well. I don't think he would have missed the double by that far. No. So I will, I will give him the credit. So we're both going to give him the credit, aren't we? Would you give him the treble as well? I'm going to give him the treble. You go into. I am. Because he's 4 0 down at the moment and he deserves <laughs> everything he can get hold of. I think, has he come too far for the yellow over the top left as we look? He would have liked to have been the other side of the bulk line because then it was just sort well, of natural. You can get through. I don't, I don't think it's an awful problem here. No. Oh, no. He's, he's just slow rolled us there and he, he's, he's fine. Yeah. Just got to be a bit cute with the cue boy. He doesn't want to. We don't want to put too much much into it and too much side and go back in off into the centre pocket. You sort of, you sort of drag it with left hand side just to try and get the cue ball to sort of dribble into where the blues well where he is now basically. Well, he, uh, he took that out of the equation. And, oh, I thought it was quite risky there going in there because he could yeah, come in into the red. You bring in the red into play, but I mean he's played it perfect. And well, Pete Mullaney, he's off the mark. Did a really good red and eight ball to win that match so we feel a confidence plus I saw you very early in the morning this morning didn't I in, in the you hotel did. I yeah I arrived too early for breakfast for the second day in a row that's right and you saw me going for a practice and, and obviously that practice paid off didn't it because I played yeah. brilliant well, I turned up for breakfast <laughs> yesterday at court, uh, quarter to seven they told so sorry, you. we don't we don't serve breakfast till seven o'clock. I said okay then. So I've come <laughs> I've come down at seven o'clock today. And it said sorry, we don't serve breakfast till half seven on a Saturday. Unbelievable. Oh, I, so I, I thought somebody's winding me up, and somebody's going to come out of a screen. So you're down oh. for eight o'clock in the morning then? <laughs> I don't, I don't give up. You come down come down at lunchtime. <laughs> How times have changed. I can't imagine in your in your pomp you dealt with breakfast very often. You just well, Probably normally, just getting in for your match. <laughs> to be fair, and in this hotel back in the, back in the day, here we go, that saying. So there has been one or two occasions where I've actually left the bar and gone for breakfast. Brilliant. But they were, Fantastic. They were, they were some, well, I'm going to say memorable times, I don't remember anything. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> By the way, what a good shot Pete's played there. Brilliant shot, yeah. You see all the side he put on it, because he knew it would kick on. He's got to be a bit delicate here. Can he just... And I think he can on these conditions float through between the yellow and the eight ball to the side cushion. Yeah, he's played that perfect. That's a great shot. <laughs> he's queuing tremendously now, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I've given him his due. I mean, wow. He's come from absolutely nowhere. So it's, it's almost as if he thought, right, okay then, Luke, I'll let you have the first four yeah, frames and then I'm going to turn it up does after seem that. that way, but uh, as I said at the start, yeah. Pete, in his own right, he, he's very, very capable and very dangerous. Yeah, it's almost as he said, Right, that's the handicapping sorted out. Now we can yeah. start. It's funny because me and Luke were discussing <coughs> this match earlier on today and we sort of said, in some ways, for, for the likes of, uh, say, me or Luke, Pete is a much harder game than it would be to someone who don't know him because we know what he's capable of. A lot of players would see him in the draw and think, maybe, I don't know this guy, he's not had, a, you know, he's not had the best of time on the Pro Series. That's probably a good draw, but... We know that he's more than capable of, of beating well, anyone in place. I think against. he's showing everybody uh, right now. You've seen it's been a, to be fair, it's been a fantastic performance. Well, it's been flawless. after the start of the match, and Luke's not really done anything wrong. He made nope. in goes half the an error at maybe four one, I think, and yeah. and Pete's not looked back. Well, oh, okay. I'm sure you had that in your day. There was a few, unless you was that one. <laughs> what do you mean that one? <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Dom. Sorry, mate. <laughs> been a bit horrible to you here. Well, you know. Decent break from Luke. There are locks on these doors here. <laughs> <laughs> so well, at first glance, it's not as bad because he's got to make this red in the corner. Then he can bump the red out in a couple of shots' time, which is glued underneath the yellow. First thing first, get the red, which he's done. I think he's actually perfect now. So, mm, not do sure. You, do you play the plant and then kick in? I think so. He might try now, but I think the yellow is in the way. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, he's it's played it very well. That's that's. Well, you've got to say, do you think that's match ball that shot there? Yeah, that is. Yeah, because he's not gonna, he's not gonna go wrong well, here. He did a set. He did a large frame. But yeah, there's no yellows were. that can come into play here, even at this. Any sort of. No, because he's gonna have the control now to just he, pop he, the, the, those two reds next to the black. They just 
well, yeah and he's had the, cannon fodder he's had the one where you get let off and then it makes you switch back on so he ain't going to make no errors with these in fact he might just take out these two reds right now and then leave one of the middle till last yeah you can't build this up with any drama folks it's too good a cueist Lovely. to go wrong no, he's that nice in these. Are we pleased with his work there, Luke? He's it been very a, assured. It was a good match. Quite it's been a, a bit of brilliant a, match. Bit of drama and Peter Mullaney's played fantastically well. I mean, he, he had that four, those four frames in a row. Yeah, and to be fair, Luke's responded really well. Yeah, but the great shot out of the snooker from Gilbert and this finish here from the break. And Luke Gilbert, well, what an assured performance from that young man. A very good afternoon, everyone. Cormac Kurt and Carl Sutton. Breaking off in the Ultimate Pool Pro Series number eight. Absolute pleasure to have your company this afternoon. Very first time I've decided to show my face this weekend <laughs> at the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. Uh, lovely to be back here in Blackpool and lovely, fitting in a way, oh to be yeah. back and joined by the ringer John Rowe. It's a uh, I always love working with you, John, uh, for, for multiple reasons, but I didn't think I would be this weekend, as you, you've actually been winning matches. I know, it's ve everyone's very surprised. Feels strange. Uh, yeah, I know, it's, uh, I don't know what's going on. I, I spoke to Simon <laughs> earlier. I, I like to put it down to, I've just been waiting for you to get here, to, to do commentary <laughs> with you. you know, Simon, so Simon so if, I, if I wasn't here, you would just, yeah, well, I'd just have to winning, go yeah, deep in the tournament. Yeah, yeah, okay. you go, you got to go again, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you that leave. makes sense. Um, but I said to Simon earlier that... Uh, um, he said, yeah, you've been winning games. I said, why are you saying that so surprised, Simon? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it just uh, is for me to do the first time this weekend and it's with you is perfect for me. So yeah. I'm uh, well happy. We're, we're all happy with that. And we've I got think. a good game as well, I believe, here to uh, be commentating on. Absolutely. Good matchup as well, this oh, yeah, as well. Really Cormac's, I've seen him play a few times. I actually played him last year at the World Championships. So he uh, looks like he's going to be a real star of the future. Just how positive he is with the game. He's already pretty handy now as yeah, well. That's that's, that's right. Yeah, definitely. Important thing to remember. Yeah, you can tell when he's on a flow, he's, you don't want to sort of get in his way really because uh, I've seen him beat some good players on the series already his first year so it's tough. oh it's just oh, it's awkward again though he's played it played that shot well we yeah, just left he's left to hit both a little yellows. bit unlucky yeah if he hits you, both yellows he's perfect he threads the needle though he's played one of the positional shots of the weekend <laughs> yeah. but he has come up a little bit well, he's just a bit Chinese over this yellow isn't he yeah I don't, I don't, and the black I don't know if he can just drop it in and cut the black and I think he's Probably wants to get over to left and side of the table slightly, so that means he's got to give it a bit of pace. Can he get into any part of the white ball? No, he's going directly down on it, so he's not going to have to do a lot with the cue ball. Tough enough pot as it is. Yeah, he's just trying to say that'll do, and I'll go for it. Yeah, there. take your medicine and and ultimately just do your job and, and make the eight ball here. Where's the black going here? Is he looking at the double? Bottom left, can't avoid the in off, can't cut it back. Does it double Can behind? he cut it back? Mm. Is, can he back double it even? Back double it past the yellow or double it into this bottom right past the yellow? Hitting it hard might be able to square it. Oh, oh pockets are not that big, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's playing the cue ball there, isn't he? Just trying to avoid the, uh, the in off, which I just don't think it was on. See what he's trying to do, pull it thick and get the side to keep the ball towards the cue ball towards the left. And, He's tried to use every bit of the pocket, but unfortunately there wasn't enough of it there. Yeah, he's tried to just use every trick in the book there. I think, to <laughs> yeah, sort of right. manufacture a pot, but yeah. I, I just don't think that was that was possible, that shot. Yeah, I think he might have been better off. I know it sounds a bit bad, but giving it a bit of a whack around the table because you don't know what could happen, you know. You're only going to be, you're not going to be in a worse position, are you? Yeah. You, know, you, can, you think you can't get it anyway. Yeah, chance for Carl Sutton to settle. Yeah, nice. nice comfy finish for the first frame of the match. Yeah, and it shots like he's just played there, which is going to be glad it's a nice little clearance like this because it just gets him to settle in how the cushion's reacting. He wouldn't want to be on the cushion, but right now, but because he's uh, had that shot, just now he can you know, readjust his mind how he's got to hit each shot. 
to his table, Stu, the cube will just trap a little bit on these cushions. I don't know if Cole's played a game already today, is he? I don't think so. I don't I think so, no, no. I, I, uh, as, as you know, I, uh, I arrived late to proceeding, yeah. so not caught too much of the action today. Yeah. Followed the action yesterday in mind, the, uh, another Pro Series win for Stevie Dempsey. How yeah. about it? Well, it? It's crazy, the the way the pattern's going, isn't it, with players? Streaky. Yeah, really. You know, when Shane first won them for you, you think, oh, no one's going to do that again. And Tom does it. Cormac Kurt breaking off in frame number three. With the cut. And he is dry. Oh, never mind. Just bring you a quickly up to date with the scores from around the grounds uh, on this Saturday afternoon in the last 64. John Rowe, 7-0 winner. Oh, wow. Against Emma Cunningham. Did you, did you turn up? <laughs> Better check. <'cause laughs> that's, that's what I wondered. <laughs> uh, John McAllison safely through against Alf and Dad. Good win for John that. Dom Cooney coming over Dave Fernandez. Seven frames to six. Craig Waddingham bouncing back after a defeat by Matt Cook yesterday. He took down Adam Basu 7-2. Rob Warren continuing his decent run at the Pro Series. 7-3 winner over Cam Tolley. Jimmy Croxton... Knocked off Amo Abdullati Riyads. Aaron Davies beating Andy Williams. Josh Kane beating Gareth Potts 7 4. Yeah. A terrific result for Josh. He's got Gareth's number a little bit in the Pro Series of late, yeah. as, as Josh. And then we've got uh, Jordan Shepard, winner over Geo Ed. We just saw that on the main table. Uh, Phil Parkin, 7 5, winner over Scott Gillespie. Christoph Lambert through against Chris Hampson. Declan Brennan getting a 7 1 win over Dan Grek. Tom Cousins puts out Matt Cook 7 2. Gary Clark knocks out Sean Story. Great result that oh, for that result. Gary. Stevie Dempsey continues his good run. He's 7-2 winner over Vivek Mack. Luke Gilbert getting the win over Peter Mullaney. Seven frames to four. Current live scores. Eddie Barker is 6-4 up against Hitton Patel. Johan Attard 6-1 up now against Greg Batten. Dave McNamara has just won, in fact, against Luke Voke 7-1. Jack Whelan is 3-0 up on Yannick Bofi. Shane Thompson and Callum Singleton have just started. They're 1-1. So, too, are Mark Fleming. And Dan Eaton Lees, and you are up to date. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you've, you, you've, you're very <laughs> was welcome. A mouth, mouthful that was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You well, well. you got yourself. Uh, so you had a fantastic run, uh, obviously in the first of that last sixteen, I think. Yeah, it yeah. was some yeah. good results in there as well. Yeah, I saw. some tough, tough matches. Yeah, I mean, was, to be honest, I was just where. I had some good matches I was playing alright but I came onto the arena table and I just really struggled to adjust to it and before you know it, I probably should have been 3-1 up I'm 4-2 down and then I didn't really get another sniff after that he, he played well broke well I broke, started breaking dry uh, but it was that transition between the two tables I really really struggled you know I felt like I didn't have a clue where the white ball was going and you even, very very different aren't they yeah they play very especially I think to be honest the, the one on table three, I think it was played a lot different to how table two did today. Even I, f I felt it w the cushions were a lot trappier, and uh, you know when you come out the mat side tables, it, you know it, you can look like an idiot, but you feel yeah. like an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You really do. You know you're thinking, oh god, I look terrible, and, and you feel like you don't know where the cue ball's going. And, and I say Jordan played well, and he adjusted a lot quicker to it. I don't know if he'd been on the tables early before, but I just yeah really struggled to, and that, I was a bit gutted because I was playing okay. I've had against, I say, I played John McAllister, five one down, beat him, and then 5-2 down against Neil, played well, and so you sort of feel like you get on a bit of a run, but you need to sort of start it again when you come onto the arena table, so... Yeah, went in, into the last 32 again, you've got Luke Sanji's yeah, later on. well, hopefully, uh, I played right this morning, so just to see how I get on, really. You know, I say it's uh, nice to do a bit of commentary, but it's nice to not be able to do it as well, I suppose. <laughs> But uh, it's, uh, it's part of my rider now. <laughs> I, uh, I get you in on a, on a comms. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy it with you, especially. You know that. <laughs> I do. Well, Carl's got a chance here at this red. Reckon he'll go close to this, you know. Yeah, he should do. He would like just goes. Oh, hitting it slow. Yeah, he just slid too much on yeah, the first cushion, that's didn't right. it? Like, when you hit it slow, the, the cue ball gets a chance to get momentum, and that top spin just pushes it into the cushion slightly and that just m makes it trap and swing slightly wider so if it, so really that was just he had the right line just needed a bit more pace on it yeah and I think he would have gone very close to that it was, it's always a risk I find when you've got you know opponent's got one ball left and it's near enough a hole yeah you've got to lay a really really good snooker and I don't 
don't feel like that's one that Cormac would go back to his chair having set that and thought, yeah. I'm, I'm good here. There's a, probably a big part of him thinking, yeah, yeah I ins- love that. In- inside he'd been thinking he, he's taking a little bit of a gamble, isn't he? But sometimes you don't have the choice. You know, you, d- you don't want to do it too much because you're not going to get away with it too much. The, you know, the good players will often get out of them and, and part of them. And like I say, like we've seen many a times, you know, Chris Mellon snooks himself just so he can do it. <laughs> I'm convinced he does. <laughs> Um, so all three frames here, it looks like, are going to go to the player who got second opportunity. Neither has settled beautifully onto this table just yet. Yeah. He's making a couple of early mistakes. Yeah, this is a nice chance uh, for Cormac now to put, put himself on the board and just sort of scrub the last two frames out of his head. It's sometimes the hardest bit to do is just forget forget some of them little mistakes that he might have made because he knows that he could possibly this could be for 3-0 but he doesn't want to think about that just think it's 2-1 next frame and Carl will be thinking I could have won that frame you know it's my break now I've got to make amends for it yeah yeah he's on the pro series I'm sure he is he's a Irish I think he might be Northern Irish actually but very good player and there's another lad as well who was, I think he was European champion. He, he lives in Northern Ireland. He uh, travels over to uh, Suffolk to work. He actually lives near Carl. And he's he's not on the pro series, but another really good Irish player. Young as well. He was at the World Championships last year. I just can't remember his name. Getting old, can't remember a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to. Carl's going to look at these reds. Yeah. It's one of those where you could, you could make a bit of an argument to go to go either, but the the red above the middle oh, pocket yeah. makes that decision easy, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's the only, the only ball that's really could possibly get in the way is that yellow bang in the middle of the table, just coming up. This, but he'll pot these three reds and just look to get up to the middle of the table above that, and he's got two pretty easy reds. He's just got to put the cue ball back in the same place each time. It's nice to see my. Doubles partner playing well, Carl at the table. Your doubles partner? Oh yeah, you uh, went in Morocco when uh, we had a uh, we had a pro am game. Is it? What did you dump Simon then? Pounder. Well, no, not exactly. Oh. So uh, oh. me and uh, me and Simon Webb. Oh, okay. Uh, went against each other, but we teamed each with a pro. Oh okay. So it was me and Carlos versus Webb and Shane Thompson. I was just going to say, but it was Shane. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, Scotch doubles. Me and Carlos took the win. Oh, did you? We did. Oh, nice. It was embarrassing for the former international Simon yes, Webb. Yes, nice. Current four-time Ultimate Pool Champion Shane Thompson, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't take it too well. Yeah. And I had to use Carl's cue, which is shocking. Did you play? Did you, yeah. <laughs> did you play? Was you playing for anything? Anything on the line? No, j- just pure pride, mate. Pride. There's, j- a, lot, there's, the a, there's a lot of that there. Yeah, j- just, just the ability to bring it up two months later on yeah. a commentary and show off, really. Yeah. For the next two years, <laughs> <laughs> until until you go back or the next the, World Championships. Do you know what there is a really interesting? So we did that on the uh, on the main arena table out there in Agadir, and by the time we sort of played for like ten minutes, all of a sudden we had about sort of fifteen twenty people watching. Really? And on, honestly, did you feel it? Oh, <laughs> did I feel it? <laughs> he was under I, it. I was bang under it, mate. <laughs> I'm bang under it with two people watching, let alone you know double oh, figures. Oh, Jay, right. it was. Um, but I tell you what, though, I played a. Uh, I, I played. I played one good shot in the yeah. entire uh, in the entire series. I think we played five frames, but I, I played one actual good shot, and it was. Um, and the tone of surprise from like the people. The people went, oh, and I got the reaction oh. of the. Guy, and I never felt so good in my life. That's what you want. They all think you're good now, don't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can you can play as well. <laughs> <laughs> Dry break here from Carl Sutton and Cormac Kerr might be in business. Carl Sutton just desperately hoping for a ball. He's cut broke as well to keep him a little bit yeah, that's together. And that should, should be should enough be for enough, him. Yeah. He just, what does he need? Three balls. Extension as well. Yeah, the reason I say that, I think, because when Phil Harrison played Steve Dempsey... Phil yeah, time fouled, and then apparently watched, the yeah. clock should have gone back. Or I'm sure at the time, Steve Dempsey cleared up with like short time, but he should have had more because the clock should have gone back. Um, I got told afterwards, but I can't remember who told me. 
<laughs> well, no, no I, I can remember, but I don't want to say it was. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's quite enough. high power, so I didn't want to. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm not saying they were definitely right, but uh, it just made me think that. But I think it's irrelevant now, isn't it? So yeah, Cormac yeah, Kerr's yeah, going to cool. concede. He doesn't want to watch Carl <laughs> Sutton time waste for the next minute or so. Carl Sutton gets the job done. Good evening once again, everybody, and apologies for the delay out in Blackpool. But it looks like we're ready to restart. All the little gremlins have been dissolved. David Hine and Chris Day here. We have sat through the break. And Ryan Pisani at the table. We haven't missed a moment of the action. Yeah, Ryan's had about 10 minutes to work out his finish. Yeah, and no wonder he's straight at the table playing at some pace. What a great nickname as well, the P. The P. Doesn't look to be too many issues here, Chris. There's a question mark over the red closest to the yellow in the centre of the table. How much of that he can see? Yeah, it looks like he's fine on that. Looks like it goes. No problems here. I think he's just hesitating, he might be just off straight the wrong way, but it looks okay. Yeah, he was just off straight the wrong way, so he's chosen to come back and play this second red in, up into the same pocket. Yeah, but again, no problems, because obviously the red next to the yellow means when he pots it, a little bit of top spin. He's got a cannon the yellow and push through to the side cushion, and the, uh, the red on the right-hand side as we're looking is going to be his final ball. He's just using his extension here because the natural takes him in off. So he's going to have to either drag it slightly or top it slightly. Yeah, just need to be wary with that shot. Did want to play it full. Didn't want to bring a snooker into the question behind that yellow. And I think he's played it absolutely perfectly, Chris. Yeah, he's fine here. Just means he's going to be couple of foot away from the red rather than a foot away from it in his ideal scenario but now stun out towards the middle of the table job done can't overemphasize how much this will probably mean to the two players out there. With so many talented youngsters and beyond in the Challenger Series, it's always very unlikely to get to the latter stages on more than one occasion. We have seen it this year already, obviously with Connor Treacy, as we watch Ryan Pisani. And David Hogan. Yeah, and David Hogan as well. Both fantastic achievements. Definitely up there, I think, with you know what Shane Thompson achieved. One to watch for the future. Yep. Wow. This time Morgan has got a ball. Yeah, he would have been panicking for just a second though as we take a look at this another take another look at this break. Cue ball being kicked dangerously towards the corner pocket. Yeah. No reaction. Great no. poker face from Morgan. Morgan's been around the block. <laughs> I he was might, never worried. It might sound bad. But uh, in all honesty, Morgan will have played enough matches that he's used to going 2 0 down without getting a shot. Oh, absolutely. Common practice on all the tours at Ultimate Pool. I think he might have been forced into Reds. I'm not sure he had any. Yeah, I mean, yellow on. He has got a yellow available. Certainly, a, it's not too appetising all the way across the length and breadth of the table. Very straight down into the bottom right. I think you are correct. He's going to attempt this red and use the yellow as a buffer just above the eight. Wow. Well, I mean, he luckily he is on reds because he, he, he took the, uh, the red along the rail first shot. I think that he's on the better colour set at the moment looking at the table because the three yellows at the top of the table look like they're a difficult 
conundrum. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if there is some sort of breakout shot, he can play into the two yellows and the redder along the breaking line. I think the yellow just to the left does pass into the left centre, so some sort of insurance of guaranteeing to be on a ball, and I'm sure that'll be in the back of his mind as he weighs up the table. Yep. Well, maybe a little bit of shot clock pressure there, ran out of thinking time and just decided to turn the table back over. Has he yeah. covered this red to the right centre, though? Yeah, unfortunately for Ryan there, I think he got caught trying to solve a problem that he didn't necessarily have to solve straight away. Um, he might have have got OK here, but with a little bit of left-hand side, I think Morgan can pot this and... Oh, OK. Well, it needed a bit more than yeah. a little bit, we presume. Yeah, I mean, the angle can be deceiving, but if he... Uh, if he could have potted that with left-hand side, the natural angle was taking him into the red that was by the two yellows, so... The shot he's played has gained Ryan another visit at the table, but he still has the same problem. Yeah, absolutely. He's just had a few more seconds to think about how he's going to solve it, I suppose. Love an angle after this shot. Well, he's attempted it straight away, but it's gone wrong. I'm not sure that angle was there, to be honest. Yeah, I was thinking the same, but I'm glad you said it before me. I think that yellow at the top of our screens was in the way. Yeah, but in all honesty, given the fact that he's on a, a short clock, shot clock rather than he's, than he's played on this weekend, the fact that he's gone into it as early as he possibly can, for me, shows that he's thinking fairly clearly out there, regardless of whether he's got the cannon he wanted or not. Yeah, I mean, it is worth mentioning, Ryan has a little bit of experience out in the, in the arena. There's just this yep. Monday just gone. And Morgan, I'm trying to think back if he's made the latter stages at an Ultimate Pool event and played under a shot and match clock. Certainly both will be inexperienced, you have to say that, and all the previous matches out on the outer arenas won't have been under them circumstances, so yeah, just I think, something more to deal with. I think that visit there has showed you that Morgan's not quite used to the uh, match clock because uh, he tried to call his extension with five seconds left and then been told he's already used it. So, yeah, I mean, this red that is by the yellow does go into the middle, and you feel that if he pots it and gains good position, he's in a good place. Well, it's a second missed pot in this match from Morgan McGuinness. Yeah, and I think that was the shot clock that got him there because the ball he potted previously, it wasn't difficult to get good on the, on the ball he's just missed. But because of the time he took and the, the thought process he was obviously going through, um, unfortunately for Morgan, he didn't uh, quite play the shot in time and didn't get as plum as he wanted. But Ryan has misjudged the potting angle. Always an issue when they're so close to the pocket, that. Catching it way too thick. Yeah, I think he's OK. Yeah, he is OK, Chris, but pampered queuing. These aren't nice. Scoreline might take a bit off it. A bit of pressure, that is. Yeah, I think if he comes around off two cushions, he might nudge the red on the left-hand side by the middle pocket if he hits it hard enough. Well, I think everybody thought he'd missed it, but he still nearly dropped. He did. Now then, Morgan. He did play it with a lot of conviction, though, you would have to say. Yeah, the cue didn't go through as sweetly as it's done in the last two frames, for sure, Chris sure how much you can manoeuvre the cue ball in taking this ball. Oh, well, there's your answer. Not, not at all. Yeah, but he's got his pattern worked out. It'll be bottom right as we look. Top left, bottom left, and the eight in the same pocket. Well, he did come around just to sort of weigh up how easy that combination shot will be. He did have a look at it. I agree with you, Chris. I think he's going to come down the table. There's certainly no need to play that shot. Great shot. Yeah. 
really, really good. That is plan. Yeah, a bit more difficult than they look them as well. Jack in the back of the queue up. Just going to time it well and keep your head very still. You're not sighting the ball as you usually would. Correct. You need to make sure as you follow through, you keep the queue down. It's very easy to bring the queue up. And that's what puts unintentional offside on those shots, unfortunately. But yeah, he played it really, really well. He's got his reward. Should be able to push through from the eight in the opposite side. And after a couple of missed pots in this frame, it's going to make him feel great getting his first one on the board, I'm sure. Settle him in, and this is what we want. We want both players in the match and feeling good. But it's round in there. They're just so entertaining. So yeah. deep breath. For me, 25 seconds is, is good here. Just pot six balls. It's not a bad split. We don't yep. see, often see the That's cue fine. ball go over to the side, but these are nice. He can really move. Plenty of stun shots. Keep that cue ball as moving as little as possible. Yeah, just don't miss and you're good. This is going to be really good, this. It's looking low 20s. Stop cue ball. 23, somewhere oh. around there. Wow, well, a few extra seconds. Even the clock on our screen stopped then. It still wasn't bad. We will be getting the time checked at a guess. 25 seconds. I've got to do well. 25 and a half, as we can see on the screen there. I'm thinking I've got it. Beautiful break by Ryan Pasali. That's just about as good as it gets. Hold yourself together here, and he should be in the final, you yeah, feel. Stop the cue ball here. Well, That's unfortunate. He need, didn't need to do it. Needs it to pull up. Oh, he's it is going to reach. But the cue oh. Stop the cue So ball. he's got five seconds, hits this foot, and he's in the final. He's done it. Congratulations to Ryan Pisani. Commiserations to Morgan. I think the time of 22.48 still would have been beaten there. We will get an, another confirmed time, yeah. I'm sure. But congratulations to Ryan. He's in the Challenger final a little bit later on tonight. Yeah, this Not sitting in players yet, so this will be interesting. This should be a great semi-final. So you heard from the players just at the table now. Kyle Cope, the young man from Derby. Uh, an early chance and a decent chance too. Opting for Reds. And, uh, everything's got a pocket here, Matt. Uh, they has, yeah, they look pretty good, these. It's a nice break. Nice, confident first shot there. Has he been on the, uh, the stream tables before or not that you know of? He's made um, at least one semi final this season. Uh, he made a semi final. In event one, which would have been on the stream table. Well, it's good for him, so he's got a bit of experience there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, event one, uh, semi final, then uh, event five, he lost in the quarter final. So he's, he's had a, he's been building momentum throughout the season. He's, he's actually, well, even now, before this game started, he's, he's ranked number four in the rankings. So, um, all to play for, obviously with those um, professional spots up for grabs, but uh, Carl is stamping his mark on it, and he's really stamped his mark on the game of, uh, over the last couple of years. As, as mentioned in that, uh, that build-up interview, he's, um, he's drawn a lot of attention. Oh, I'm, but I'm surprised he's going for it like that. Yeah, yeah, me it's too. A shot chase. Uh trying to split the balls and leave the gap but uh, that was really the only way it could go wrong I mean yeah I mean I, I was sort of wondering who was going to go about getting on the black I thought maybe he might have considered taking that one on the left just to get rid of it and then um, leaving the one that was near the black to top pocket as a stun shot need some help here oh he's played that very well hasn't he ever that is a nice shot still needs to play another good one now though he's got quite a lot of angle here yeah he if should be able to bump that yellow. Yeah, like. Cannon's a yellow half ball, then he should hold for the eight. Yeah, full ball was, was always going to leave it, but it was going to leave it a little bit more awkward. But he's got a shot, and that's all he can ask for. Yeah, it's an easy enough shot as well. Kyle's from the Derby area, and Sam's from uh, Midlands, I think, Wolverhampton area, so there'll be a, should have a lot of support in the room. 
Another well-timed break. Yeah, I'd say he don't look to put too much into it, really, but he, yeah, yeah. he times it well and he gets a good response. So. It kind of looks like about 70% of, yeah. of, of what he could do. He's not, he's not giving it the full beans, for sure. But uh, it's, a, it's a great split, and that's just down to the, to the timing. He really timed it well. The cue ball tracks straight up the middle of the table. It's a very nice break. Just been a little bit unfortunate not to have an easier opener. Yeah. I feel this is a very important frame for Sam now. Yeah. It's, uh, you can't really be falling three behind. It's needs to be uh, notching this one up after that miss from Kale. There's a lot of traffic on that left-hand side, but I mean everything has a pocket. The one that may cause the most problems. I'm surprised he's trying to, to nudge that because he shouldn't have been anywhere near that. No. Should he really? I, I, I don't think he's tried to nudge it. As he <laughs> surely he's tried to land on it. It's just I mean, he's actually still okay. He's slightly hampered, but should just better drop it in. So it's the ball on the left that's just to the right of the eight. And it's the plan for that one. I mean, if he's landed on the gap, he would have liked to have been yeah, further across to the right. I mean, if he can play the ball to the right and just finish round blue spot, then he could take that through the gap and then leave the other yellow long. Yeah. He's going to go up table. Same result, really. He's still looking for that, for that gap. Just needs to keep coming. Yeah, that's okay. I'll do. Yeah, he can just bump into the red. Next to the yellow, it's a good shot. Well judged. Ideally, they like these as your last two, really, just because they link you up with the black as yeah. well. Yeah. Let's see which one he goes for next. Again, controlled it fairly well. That red was always going to head towards the yellow, so he took that into consideration. Just wondering how much room he's got to play with here for getting onto that yellow. Yeah. I think he can just top towards the red. Oh, he could top on it well. He just tried to steal a little bit of the pocket, didn't he? Yeah. And it, it was a bit of a quick one. Yeah, it was. It, it wasn't his best set, really, was it? I mean, it was a tricky little shot. I think he was just worried. You know, he didn't want to catch the black. He didn't want to catch the red. He had to make sure he came out. But, yeah, I think maybe he's a little rushed. And the way that Kale has started so far, I really can't see him missing these. You've got to say, he looks at home in this environment not phased at all and this is you know it's it's just a it's just a different place to be you know they, they've been playing in the Trafalgar room the Queen's room all these other rooms on the on the side and there's a few people in those rooms well they're always busy but this is just a, a much more intimidating environment there's a big crowd of people watching on expectantly the cameras are pointing at you the lights are on and it really is just a different game. I think that's why it's important that Kyle's been to a semi this season, he's already played in this environment, so you know, it'll just be in his mind that he'll be more settled. Um, you know, this is Sam's first effort this season and you know, I can understand if there's a bit of nerve. So. of things to admire about Carl Cobb's game. It's um, got a nice long cue action. Lovely pause on the backswing. He's got a nice cadence around the table. He doesn't hang about. Yeah. He's not rushing things, but he's definitely not hanging about. It does surprise me a little bit that he's just started out with the cut break because he's, he's never played on this table. And I think, yeah. I mean, you know, if the cut break's a thing, then fine. But I think I'd probably be opening with a 
with a front ball break, but having said that... Having said that, he's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> smashed them. So. He's, crun he's crunched yeah. that one. You stick with it, Sam. That's right. <laughs> this is a big frame for Sam. He has to get on the scoreboard just for his own confidence and just to apply a bit of pressure on Kyle. Can't let him have this game all his own way. Yeah, you feel it's a must win. You know, it's... Uh, He's got to give at least a little bit of pressure here. If he's not getting this, then uh, it could be uh, a bit of a whitewash. Just a little cannon. Very nice. Well controlled and all the hard work now done. There wasn't a lot of that, to be honest. I think he's going to take this one now and well, he's going to put one in the middle and come round the angles. Unless he can just bring it back enough to make it a bit easier. As long as he's not off angle there, is that right? I think he's OK. I think he can just uh, screw this straight back. Yeah, it's OK. Very nice. Not a huge pace. I mean, we have seen cut breaks that, that, that are... Yeah, they put a lot more pace into them, but really well controlled. Just a, a couple of potential issues. Well, he's brave if he's going for that for I, sure. I would say so. <laughs> but that's his, that's, his, that's his tough one, isn't it? It that's certainly is, yeah. I mean, if you're confident with it, it's the ideal shot to take. Oh, but I don't like this. I do not like that. Oh, oh, I'd be, I'd be dubious. I think I'd, if I was Kyle, I think I'd be asking the referee about that one. Mm. All well and good raising your cue, and to be honest, I like that shot. I, I like not I having your hand on the table, but yeah, but for me, that's a foul. The referee's there, gone to, to have a look, I think, indeed. You White's got to stop or come back. It's It's gone through with the ball. Yeah, yeah, and then stopped. Yeah, I agree. I think the ref's going to go and have a look at the replay on that. I think... Kyle did ask the question, and, and and fair enough as well. I don't think you can blame him for asking the question there. Yeah, I'd definitely be asking that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's up to the ref to call it. Sam, Sam's not gonna. No, he's not gonna know. I you've, mean, you've got a ref on it, and it's down to the yeah. ref, really, isn't it? Yeah. For the, uh, for the dead air for the moment. We've just got the uh, referee having a, a look at the replay with us. And there's a couple of referees looking at it now. It's a very hard one to call. Yeah, the call is foul. I think there's, uh, there's about eight referees around that table watching on, and they've all watched the replay, and uh, they are indeed going to call a foul. I think it's hard to argue with that. Yeah, I think that's a tough one to thing. call. It really was, you know, looking call. at the replay, so, you know, he did look tougher on the replay, but I think on that second replay, I think, yeah, definitely a, a foul for the me. The problem is for, for me there, Matt, I mean, where do you, like, if, if you look at VAR, it has to be obvious to overturn it. Yeah. The referee called no foul. Yeah. It has to be obvious to overturn it. Is it that obvious? Um, I don't know. I would say yeah because the yeah. white went forward. That yeah. you know, simple as that really. Yeah. It's a, yeah. the white over the distance that it was away from the ball and the way it was queuing it couldn't really go forward yeah. the way it did without pushing through yeah. it. So yeah. No, that's a fair shot. That is a fair shot. I think if yeah. you stab at those properly, they almost instantly zip back. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it went forward and then stopped. Yeah. You, you would expect because, that yeah, to exactly. have immediate reverse. Yeah. And it, they were so close together, it's almost yeah. impossible to play that without yeah. fouling, in my opinion. And the thing is, it, yeah, I mean, if you look at other rule sets, in Blackpool, that would be a foul. And in world rules, you get away with that. Yeah. Because world rules, as long as you've got your, yeah. your cue raised, then, uh, then it'd be okay. Yeah. I think that's a fair shout. I don't think anyone at home would be uh, disagreeing with that one too much. But. There's certainly been a few push shots in pub leagues over the years where um, they've caused issues. I don't know whether you've played in, in many pub leagues in your time, Nick, but when oh, you get yeah. a push shot, you get people who literally don't have a clue about it and yeah. people who do and yeah. be quite comical at times. Yeah. He doesn't know where they put the ball is. <laughs> whole table not sure where to put it that's the place this should be should be fairly uh, fairly elementary from here and, and that really is a very very big point in the game I mean I can understand why Sam went for that because there was that that was a really that was the only problem on the table as you can see now it was absolutely the only problem well there'll be another problem now he's not come far enough for the red that he's played on does it go top left? I think it does. Yeah, he's, he's unless I'm doing him a disservice and he played on this top left, but I don't. No, I don't, I don't think, think he did. He did. No. No. I mean, if it doesn't go top left, it you know you'd be able to plant it onto the other yellow, but yeah. obviously it definitely goes. It's easy. Yeah, if, if Sam can find this frame, yeah, three each. In a race to six, yeah, four twos, very, very different complexion. This was a huge frame. That was a very, very big call. Yeah, I could see the temptation for Sam of taking that shot on first, but for me, I think I'd have just took the colour set and then gone for it because you know, the yellows were so much better than the reds. Yeah. yeah. It was like a double whammy for him, really. You I know, mean, you, fouling. You, you knew, you mentioned it as soon as he jacked his cue up the first time. It was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, as you say, just get the get the ball and then yeah. find find another one to yeah. develop develop that. The reds were tough, you know. They had yeah. a couple of balls yeah. that have been tricky to develop. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So you're thinking all of a sudden the white's going in, isn't it? Before you know it, the white's actually helping the uh, the ball. In, <laughs> <laughs> Such a nice split. A little bit under hit there. Yeah, yeah, just a touch. Should still be fine. You can just drop this into middle. Nothing really to do with the cue ball. Well, again, he's yeah, it's just making hard work of things. I don't know why you wouldn't just drop that in dead weight and then play yeah. the one down the left hand side rail next. It's me wonder now if he's going to take the one. I mean, he's looking at this one to middle. He also looks at the one top right, like cannon into the red to come off to the left hand side. But it just seems like he's playing on instinct at the moment. Yeah, just really playing on instinct, and, and of course. You sometimes have to with that 15 second clock. This is a very alien situation for, for Sam. It's easy to, 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 to say it from here, isn't it? I yeah, mean, it is. Know, when you put yourself in that arena and you're trying to win a frame to get five each in the semi-final to get to the final of the challenger, it's, it's a whole different thing. I mean, hats off to these players for even getting That's in there. Nice shot. Very nice shot there. Looks like he's given himself the perfect angle. That's a very nice shot again. Um, yeah, perfect, I think. You can just screw back in the straight line. Just wants to be where he is now, really, yeah. yeah. Screw yeah. back to where the white is now. He's got a, a decent margin of air. He's probably got a foot either side of the eight ball to give himself a shot. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh no. no. Oh, wow. Again, he just seemed to rush it. It just seemed to get down and a couple feathers. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. Didn't 
Mm. Well, from Kyle's point of view, I don't think you're going to get a better chance. Yeah, he's he's going he's gonna to draw stumps for a second, I think. He's just take a breath. Six and a half minutes left on the clock. He's not going to... The only thing is here, he's not going to draw a, a, a foul. Well, I say that. <laughs> Common set as well, with the one cushion escape, you wouldn't have thought he yeah, was, yeah, he was ever going to draw a foul there. But, but actually, I mean, that's, yeah, in hindsight, it's a, it's a clever shot from Carl, and it's ultimately probably going to win in the match. He just needs to hold his nerve now. Just needs to hold his nerve. The clock should not be a factor. There's nothing to think about here. 15 seconds is ample time for these shots. He has taken his extension, though. Yeah, he got a feel for Sam there. He'd done all the hard work. And Everything. Yeah, he's Everything. really been much better, really, on that last ball. It's one of those you probably see it in your mind's eye before you play it, and then that just... I don't know, it just makes you snatch a little bit perhaps. You get a little rush of adrenaline to think this is the ball for for five each. Horrible situation to be in. You feel for him, that's for sure. But what can you say? I mean it's uh it it, it has been just a a very, very solid performance from, from Carl Cope. A couple of little mistakes in there, but that's more than understandable. Yeah, the, I mean, they were minor mistakes, yeah. really, weren't they? Overall, yeah. his performance has been yeah. a top draw, really. So you said before this one started that uh, the winner of this would be favourite in the final. Do you stand by that? Yeah, for me, Kyle yeah, wins Carl. it. Yeah, I think he takes the final. Well, Carl Cope will be very happy with that result. He needed that. And uh, just, yeah, for scoreboard pressure, just to say to Carl that I'm here you're not getting this all your own way and on table three that's uh, the familiar pate of uh, Batman Eddie Barker yep. chatting to uh, Eddie before that one and uh, he was up for winning it he said he's, uh, he's not actually beat Gary recently and uh, so he's definitely up for winning that one tonight that's one that got away from Paul yeah, that's a bit of a shocker that one so we're ready to go in frame five it's been a Pretty quick pace so far. Well, it's the time has actually flown. I can't believe it's. Is it 40 minute clock or 50 minute clock? Uh, 40. 40 it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's more like I was going to say. Surely we're not 24 <laughs> minutes into this, are we? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that it is a pretty good, pretty good pace that they're keeping so far. 14 minutes for the first four frames. was just what Sam needed this after his clearance in the last one just to give him an opportunity here yeah. a little bit of work to do but they're definitely on yeah Carl would have desperately wanted a ball there just to just to re-establish that full frame lead he's looking at the plant here maybe got a three ball plant into the middle yeah yeah should open things up as well yeah he's going to head up towards the top pocket oh no he's managed to hold on to it but they're just a little bit on top of each other now it's a little bit awkward now those two have, have just sat on each other because they don't go to the top left yeah I think for me I think I'd pop this one to the top left and try and leave the one that's sort of closest to what would be the blue spot uh, taking that long oh what's he done what's he done is he on it oh He's had a bit of a result there. Yeah, he's on the plant. Yeah. Nicely on the plant too. That could have easily gone wrong. Yeah, I think I'd have left that other one long because then all you did then was stun it in, drop the other one through and take the one that's near the rail long. Yeah. Unless he's got the double now, then he'd have to get rid of the one that he'd ideally want for black. 
Looks like the red's in the way of the double. Yeah, it's tight. That is tight. May just have the bottom half of the pocket, but he'd have to play it to perfection. He's taking it on. Got it. Nice. Very nice. As I say, when you look at that overhead, it, it, it I don't think there was a whole pocket there. Mm. Must have been pretty close to that uh, that red. Well judged. Just stayed down on that one for a second. It was just, <laughs> just, just heading towards make the top sure of the then. pocket. Yeah. Another very well taken chance, and uh, both of these semi-finals have been a real, really good standard. You can see why these players have have got this far. Yeah, and like you mentioned before, it can be difficult to do that when you come into a different environment. You know, you've been out on those other tables and got used to them, and then you're coming into here and it's reacting different, and you've got the pressures that you've got that go with it. And yeah, they're, they're holding up well. And um, using my tennis an analogy, they are back on serve as well because it's going to be Sam's breaking the sixth frame. So yeah. he's, he's dug in well there. Very well. After a bit of a sketchy start. Deej leaving a long eight ball to uh, take the lead. Races to seven, of course, in the Pro Series. We're watching a, a race to six on the main table semi final. Yep, nice little. So, he'll want more of the same from that last break because that really was a, a fabulous cut break. Another very good split. Yeah, he's catching that so well. He's timed it very nicely. Yeah, really looking forward to this one. Both players in form. Both good young attacking players, so this, is, this should be a cracking match. I always love these challenger finals because so much to play for. Very decent prize money plus guaranteed promotion to the pro ranks pretty much for winning a final. Kyle Cope pretty much already guaranteed that promotion through his performances to date this season. Ryan, I think making this final may have been enough, but would certainly like to add the icing on the cake by taking the win. good thing about the challenger tournaments obviously it's a, it's a grueling tournament seven matches or so to get to the final you've got to be on good form to get there so you know that the players are going to be in good touch they both had matches on the arena table so they should be uh, used to the speed and the reaction of the cloth so uh, hopefully we'll uh, get a good high standard yes yeah, it's a big moment for these guys because they've played on the outer tables the whole way through up until the semi-finals they have each had that semi so should be warmed up and used to the conditions it's not just the fact the table plays different, but it's just a very different atmosphere. Used to playing in rooms with 10 or 15 tables. There's a sort of general commotion around the room, but it's not really a big crowd focused on you as such. Whereas this is showpiece final. Coming up to 11 o'clock on a Saturday night. It's a pretty lively atmosphere out there. Yeah, both players look up for it. Both uh, putting good performances in the semi-final. Yeah, these are two form players, ranked 4th and 11th in the provisional rankings at the moment. I've seen a few times real underdogs have come through to these challenger finals, but these are guys already establishing a reputation. Yeah, Ryan's obviously off the back of a, a very good week so far. Him and Dayan in the pairs on, the, on Monday night qualified through their group. So if he, uh, if he can take down this, this title, he'll... Uh, that will cap off a very good week for him. Yeah, and you always feel it's nice. The overseas players doing well. You get various English players moaning about the, the journey up to Blackpool. But for these guys, Ryan's come over for Malta for this. It's, it's a lot, lot longer their journeys. Yeah, obviously there's, there's quite a few of the Maltese guys that come over. It's all good players. Good bunch as well. Good characters to have on the tour. And uh, very good players. And... Uh, and 
they support each other as well, which is nice to see. There's a, they'll be uh, they'll all be there in the crowd supporting Ryan in this final. He's a busy style around the table, hasn't he? Looks like he's really up for the occasion. Extension call. So just calling the extension here. It's quite tight into the left centre, which would be the, the easiest pocket for it if it goes. Yeah, I think the pattern he took, I sort of assumed it, it went comfortably, but yeah, it is tight, so he's, um, he's come across to have it in the right middle instead. A little bit further than it'd like, but it should still be okay. Yeah, you don't need to bash this too hard. He's just going to trust his queuing here, roll this in the centre. Wow, that's the tension of the final. Just that positional shot just wasn't quite unmissable. Still a pot you'd have expected him to make, but just pushing it to the near jaw. Just didn't quite cue that one as, as smooth as the other shots in the clearance. He just sort of maybe a little bit of tension in his arm. And Extension caught. I think you never really get rid of that until you've got a frame on the board, so you'd be a bit disappointed with that. And it's his first chance to see Kyle in this final. It's a double whammy when you miss as well, because it's not just the frame you've lost, but you're sort of playing your opponent in. It was Kyle's break there that led to that opportunity. If he could have kept Kyle frozen in his chair, it would have been... It. Ryan's break next. There's a bit of a bonus chance this when you're not really expecting to win the frame and then suddenly you find yourself back at the table. Definitely. I think it, Carl would have wrote this frame off and he'd have been preparing himself for the next frame mentally. And yeah, to be back at the table, he'll be delighted with this. And if he can pinch this frame, that'll uh, be a little blow early doors. Not won't, uh, Might not have effects maybe in the rest of the match, but it's always nice to, as I said, it's always nice to get that first frame on the board, especially if you pinch it. Playing to a slightly longer format this final, 50 minute match clock, race to seven. Been playing race to six all the way through, but understandably want to make this final a showpiece. And this is also the format for the Pro Series, which is where at least one of these, if not both, will be plying their trade next season. Big moment, you, you know yourself, getting that promotion to the, the pro ranks. Yeah, there is always that. I mean, th th these two players, as we've said, have, have had good seasons so far, so they're both in a position where e even if either one of them loses, they're probably still going to make the make the promotion up to the pro ranks next season. But yeah, it, it, it's massive. You know, you you playing all season to try and get that, get in that top 16 to get your pro card for next year, and there can be a lot of pressure on it. So this bonus chance nicely taken from Kyle. Had a semi-difficult opener, but it's kept it very tight since then. Frame that he wouldn't have expected to win and probably shouldn't have won. They haven't spent a load of time out there. There's a lot of people watching. There's a lot of good players watching. There's going to be a lot of other pros around the room. That's a great break. Oh, it's just gone awkward in the bottom left, but... Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And like I said before, that it's a lot of matches to get to this final. Seven matches. It's a long slog. It's a lot of effort. It's tiring, especially the first day. You're playing. You're playing five matches on the first day. It does get long. It does get tiring. In, in, and I've been in a position twice where I've lost in a final. And it is. It is annoying when you lose after all that effort. You don't get to take the trophy home. So, yeah, you you, you do really, really, really want to get that get that trophy in your in your bag on the way home. Diplomatic. He not mentioned that so far, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do try and forget about it, but people keep reminding me. <laughs> well, it sort of turned into a virtue in the end. The fact you got promoted. Yeah, served the purpose, I suppose. <laughs> still, still hurts. <laughs> Speaking of good players in the crowd, I noticed you had Mark Williams watching on while you were playing earlier on. <laughs> yeah, taught him a thing or two. I think probably what not to do. <laughs> A few pointers. He was well. It was a strange one. He was, he was actually in the draw. He he pulled out because he couldn't commit to the full weekend. But then he was here with his son, who was playing in the TikTok tournament. His son actually looked to be a really good queuist. I only saw a bit of it, but 
A bit different from his dad. He's a, he's a right-hander and maybe a slightly more conventional style than Mark, but you could really see the mannerisms. He, he was a real chip off the old block yeah, and yeah. the mannerisms around the table. I think he got to, I think, uh, I suppose, I think he got to the semi-finals of that tournament, so I think uh, I had a run in it and just didn't quite make the final, but... Can really ask for much better genetics than that. So having taken that last frame, Kyle straight back at it. Yeah, he played a great, great skill shot in that bottom left, put in the red on the edge to clear that, clear that little problem area, and he's, he's, he's had the cue ball on a string in this one. Looked very good. Yeah, I have to say I've been really impressed with his composure. I mean, actually, from both of the players, but Kyle in particular is just very sort of serene around the table. It just looks like he's more than used to playing at this level. Yeah, he does look. He does look very good out there. Very, like I say, very composed. Like composure is sometimes the thing that younger players lack. You often get some very good players, and actually the standard of their game can be excellent, but sometimes can maybe look a bit rushed or a bit nervous. But he just looks like he's been out there all along. Yeah, and I think obviously he plays a lot of tournaments. He, you know, he, he does well. And obviously, we, he, he's he's been very successful recently with money matches, which is great experience for handling pressure and nerves and stuff like that. I mean, if you're Kyle, are you, are you hitting this at full power? Well, it's a, a sporting break. He hasn't given it full treatment, but he's, yeah. he's played it properly. He's took a bit off that, hasn't he? But yeah, I think I think the idea of that break was to take a bit off it and just try and get a ball down, keep control of the table. And Extension call. Yeah, and fair enough. He doesn't want to bring in... He doesn't want some story of Ryan somehow coming up with some miracle two-frame clearance. Match is done now. Bit of a, a victory lap here if he wants it. He can try and go for a clearance on reds, try and get the job done. Jeez, going to run out of time for that, isn't he? But the match is done either way. A bit anticlimactic just in the last minute or two, but actually that should take nothing away from what's been a <laughs> <laughs> dramatic match. So warm embrace and handshake from a very sporting Ryan Pisani. He's played brilliantly to get through to this final. He has battled through 288 players to reach this moment. Kyle Cope has reached the promised land. He's not only got promotion to Pro Series, but he's ended his season, or ended this tournament at least, with a win. He's still in Challenger Event 8, so he could get do the double.